Up next, McNeese State head coach Matt Viator and his Cowboys starting their season with an upset at South Florida. The Cowboys looking to bounce back after a tough loss at Northern Iowa last week. They visit the Stripes at Central Arkansas. Cowboys have never won here. Meanwhile, for Central Arkansas, like the Cowboys, the Bears ranked in the top 15 in the nation. Central Arkansas defends their home turf. It's the Red Beans and Rice Bowl. It's next on the Southland TV Network. Celebrating the league's 50th anniversary in 2013, this is Southwest Conference football. Live from Mercy Field at Estes Stadium in Conway, Arkansas. We've got a good one today. The Central Arkansas, the Bears, playing host to the Cowboys from McNeese State. Hi again, everybody. Randy McAvoy alongside Shea Walker. Great to have you with us as we kick off another conference season in the Southland Conference. And you can't ask for a better rivalry. This has really turned into a good matchup between these two programs. Yeah, you talk about the great matchup, Randy. The last four games have been decided by a total of eight points. And you've got first game of the Southland Conference schedule, so a very important win to get for both of these guys. Let's talk about the two quarterbacks. Let's begin with McNeese State, the Cowboys, and their veteran quarterback, Cody Strout. Well, Strout has done a great job of leading this McNeese offense, and over the years, he has developed, and he continues to get better. One of the things Coach Matt Viator said was that he's getting better each week. His footwork is better. He's throwing the ball better, and it has been a big boost to the Cowboys offense to have him do that. On the flip side, for Central Arkansas, a man that's led this uh, offense for a couple of years now, Wendrick Smothers. He can do damage on the field with his feet work, and of course, he's got a strong arm. He can throw the football to some good receivers. Well, he certainly has good receivers, and this Central Arkansas offense is just loaded for bear, pardon the pun, but when Wendrick Smothers is back as a trigger man, he is the guy that absolutely makes it happen. And he's got a good coach, Nathan Brown. University of Central Arkansas guys will know that name because yeah. he is one of the top leading passers ever for Central Arkansas. And you see the uh, Bears of Central Arkansas breaking out their grades today for the first time. Good luck for Central Arkansas. Right now, well, we're going to toss it down to the field. Third member of the broadcast team, Brooke Bentley, with more on the head coaches. Brooke? Yes, Randy, let's talk about the head coaches in this matchup. Matt Viator is in his eighth season with McNeese State. He is the winningest active coach in the conference right now. And he started the season with leading his team to its first win over an automatic qualifying BCS team when they crushed South Florida in that season opener. As for Clint Conk, he is in his 14th season here at Central Arkansas, and he just notched his 100th win. He got that two weeks ago. And I asked him about reaching the century mark. He said he took a day to reflect on it, but now the only number he cares about is number three, and that means getting his third win for the Bears this season. Randy, back up to you. All right, Brooke, thank you very much. We are ready for some football on the stripes here in Conway. When we come back, we got the opening kickoff. McNeese State, Central Arkansas on the Southland Conference TV Network. The game of the week on the Southland Conference Television Network brought to you by Mid-South Bank, the official bank of the Southland Conference. It's time to love your bank. By State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com for your chance to win the ultimate VIP experience. And let State Farm help you get to a better state. And by Justin's, the official championship ring provider of the Southland Conference. Justin's, the ring of champions. It is a school of opportunity. Over the last 75 years, we've been Fulbright Scholars, Pulitzer Prize winners, Emmy Award winners, and Medal of Honor recipients. We've come here from all over the world. McNeese has been pioneering opportunities you won't find just anywhere, like the Innovation Engineering Program, a state-of-the-art meat processing and production facility, and a model chemical plant. At McNeese, we are celebrating the past and pioneering the future. At the University of Central Arkansas, I've encountered world-changing academics and game-changing athletics helping me become a regular on the Southland Conference Honor Roll. 
I was able to graduate early with a business degree, and now I'm seeking a second degree in physical education, all while playing Division I volleyball, softball, and soccer. UCA put me and my education front and center. Learn how at uca.edu. We are back here at Estes Stadium in Conway, Arkansas. The Bears and the Cowboys, Central Arkansas, McNeese State. Conference opener for both teams here this afternoon. For now, the weather looks great. We understand we're keeping an eye on that radar. Big cold front in northwest Arkansas. We'll see if it makes its way here or not. Wraps up. Hopefully, it'll stay away. McNeese State won the coin toss. They deferred, so they will kick off to Central Arkansas to get this started. Jean Bro, number one, has the honors for McNeese State. And back for Central Arkansas is number 14. That's Jatavius Wilson. Wind's kind of whipping around down on the field, so Jean Bro will tee it up one more time. So just one back for Central Arkansas. Jatavius Wilson, he's a freshman from Bastrop, Louisiana. And we are underway in Conway, Arkansas. Great to have you with us on the Southland Conference Television Network. Wilson takes a knee, and Central Arkansas will start things off on offense here this afternoon. Again, breaking out, Jay, the, the gray uniform for the Apparently the very first time, and I actually, I'll admit, I like these uniforms. Not yeah, bad. there's a good look for these guys, and it's certainly a different look, as you normally see them in clad in purple pants and the gray tops, but not today, man. They made the change after they came out, warmed up, and you could see the players reacting very well to the change in uniforms. And off goes to Willie Matthews. Not much there at all. Loss of one yard on the play, so... I think really key when you look at the Central Arkansas offense, and we'll talk about it. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first in this football game. Four Central Arkansas up front. Cloaker, Carruthers, Willis, Happy, and Dominique Allen at right tackle. He's a good one. And in the receiving core, great group as well for Winrich Smothers to throw to. He's fouled one of them right here. Pass is caught deep inside McNeese territory. That's Chase Dixon is tied in one of his favorite targets, and that's a pickup of 51 big yards on the pass play. But well, you talk about just a great route and good recognition by Smothers, Randy. That Dixon was down on that right side of the line, and you'll see him here on the bottom of your screen. He's running wide open in the secondary. Clearly a bust in coverage. Safety not able to come over the top, and he comes up with a huge play. And off again, that's Willie Matthews. He's tripped up, picks up a couple of yards. Take a look at the defensive starting line. Brought to you by State Farm Insurance for McNeese State. They've got a lot of playmakers on this defensive side up front. Loveless Ware, Dorn, Ellison, Bo Brown, Thompson, and Guy Morgan. And then in that secondary, very good group. Aaron Sam is sitting out because of a suspension in this first half. So Aaron Sam, the strong safety right now being replaced. You'll see number 45 out there, Brent Spikes, in this first half, Shay. So Aaron Sam yep. will be eligible to turn in the second half. But well, Courtney Whitehead coming up with a huge catch on the sideline for first down. Willie Matthews only picked up two yards on that first carry, Randy. But Whitehead comes up with a nice catch on the sideline, moves the chains. Mothers. Oh, man, they don't have an answer for Dixon. Yeah, Chase Dixon again, the senior tied in, picks up nine yards. He's a big guy, Shay, 6'5", 239. He's a load. Well, eight catches coming into today's game. Three of them were for touchdowns. So he makes the and most he, of the catch. And he's got two big ones <laughs> on the opening drive of the game. Junior Desmond Lewis, number five, top of the screen, but the handoff goes to Willie Matthews. Is he in? Oh, he hit it about the half yard yeah, line. Yeah, he's close. But it is enough for a first down, Randy. So Matthews picked up the first down, first and goal from about the, eh, the measuring it around the one, but it's just inside the one yard line. Well, they're trying to establish this running game to, to make it productive because it's something they've struggled with so far this year. Well, the run game has been fairly anemic for the Bears so far, but 
you know, when you've got weapons like Dixon and you can get it down the field like they're doing, and they're now punching it in for the touchdown. Yeah, that was Jacoby Walker who checked in in a little wildcat formation, yep. and Walker takes it in, so Smothers came out. Put a little wrinkle to that offense, and Central Arkansas first drive of this game back home since late August, and they find the end zone. Well, how do you like me now? How about the off week and getting ready to play one of the toughest conference opponents that you're going to face? And Central Arkansas starting the game off with the bang. Point after tip coming up by Eddie Camara of Central Arkansas. Snap is good. Kick is good. And just like that, tell you what, folks, it didn't take long at all. Central Arkansas gets the football, and they march it right down the field. Little run game, little pass game, and Jacoby Walker, the junior from Houston, Texas, punches it in. Bears lead McNeese 7-0 here in Conway. Hey, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Look. Maybe it's her face. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. We are back at Conway, Arkansas, Estes Stadium. A couple of minutes off the clock, and Central Arkansas finds the end zone. Bears on top, 7-0 over at McNeese State. But how about and that efficient drive there, Randy? Seven plays, 75 yards. And it looked pretty easy for the Bears. Jay Stinker has the kickoff duties for Central Arkansas. And Manise State will bring it out at the 15-yard line. And oh, good not return. much going there. Very good special teams coverage there. And Cowboys will get their first shot at it on offense here this afternoon. That was Khalil Thomas. Freshman wide receiver out of Baton Rouge on that kickoff return. And you know, Randy, I like the way that he handled that ball because the ball landed on the 15-yard line and it bounced straight up. Davis did a good job, I think, of feeling that and then just kind of fighting forward to pick up another five, six yards. There's the quarterback of McNeese State. Talked about him at the top, Cody Stroud, veteran quarterback in this McNeese State program. And he comes out throwing on first down. Pass nearly caught, but knocked loose. Well, they're going to get it. They're going to give him a catch, though. It's that's Nick Deontay. Jacobs. Yep. Take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by State Farm for McNeese State up front. Good looking offensive line for the Cowboys trying to protect Cody Stroud and got a good tail back there in market as well. And good receiving here, Celeste McGilvery. And then that tight end, Nick Jacobs. 18 catches uh, on the season coming in for Nick Jacobs. So he's Cody Stroud's top receiver so far early in this football season. Handoff is Marcus Wills. Plenty of running room up the middle, crossing the 40. Wow, what a run. What a great run by Wills, Randy. He hits it up on that left side, and he goes through arm tackles. 
running with a purpose. And he was one guy away after he broken through at about three arm tackles. Take a look here again. Running downhill, he's got great leverage, lowers those shoulders, runs right over the top of some of the would-be tacklers. up big yards for the first down. The average is 6.3 yards a carry coming into the game, and you get a good a good reason why when you watch him run like that. Nice little average starting today. First and 10 for the 43. Cody Stroud looking up top downfield. Good coverage on Deontay Spencer. Nothing going there. Let's take a look at the State Farm starting lineups if we can for Central Arkansas. Up front, Woodard, Hornbuckle, Randall, and Markeith Gaines. We'll talk a lot about those defensive ends. Linebacking core, Wyatt, Highland, Radarius, Winston. And then there's the secondary, Peters, Love, Mitchell, and Winfrey. That was great coverage by Marcus Peters on that last play, running stride for stride with the wide receiver, Cody Stroud. Nowhere to go with that ball. And Marcus Wiltz again, tries to fight his way to the 45. Maybe pick up a couple of yards on that play. He's met there by, by Ricky Wyatt. You talk about the, the Central Arkansas defense, uh, Shea. One guy missing out there is a name I know the fans around here have been uh, used to seeing making big plays. Justin Hurd not on the football field today. Well, he has been suspended due to violation of team policy and definitely a leader on that team, a senior linebacker, 6'1", 230 pounds, and he's a guy who can really, uh, he, he's a stalwart on that defense and he will be missed. Third down and eight play. Cody Stroud passes caught inside of Central Arkansas territory. That's Jerry on McGilvery picks up 13 yards. They needed eight, so those chains will move for the Cowboys. That's a nice throw by Cody Stroud. Again, not taking too much, but he locks onto McGilvery early. Delivers the ball out there nicely. McGilvery had a good cushion from the defensive backs, and he's only played in three games of the five that these Cowboys have played so far, but did a good job right there moving the chains and picking up a first down. 41 yard line Stroud over the middle pass is caught that's Deontay Spencer he's got running room outside he gets a block turns the corner Spencer finds the end zone touchdown McNeese 41 yards I can tell you what was great Central Arkansas put the blitz on Cody Stroud stands tall in the pocket and he delivers a perfect strike take a look he's going to get pressure from the backside from Marquise Gaines but before Gaines can get the Stroud, he jumps off a little pass to Deontay Spencer. And how about the wheels? Spencer set up a great block by the wide receiver by staying close to the hash mark. And then he turns it outside of that, Randy. He hits the sidelines at full speed. And he didn't slow down until he got well past the end zone. Ryan Rome with the point after for McNeese State is up and good. And we've got ourselves a tie ball game here in Conway, Arkansas. Cody Stroud hooking up with Deontay Spencer. We're early first quarter. We're tied at seven. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. It's that feeling you get, that sense of complete trust and assurance that they will always be there for you. And when that happens, it's easy to fall in love. All it takes is the Go Deposit mobile app, your iPhone or Android, and a split second to fall head over heels with Mid South Bank. And here's the best part it's free to qualified customers. Now you can do your banking from wherever you are, even long distance. Let us show you the love right from your smartphone. It's time to love your bank. Mid South Bank, serving Texas and Louisiana. Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. 
Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. Bill, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. All right, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact your local State Farm agent about a car loan that could save you hundreds. Welcome back to Estes Stadium here in Conway, Arkansas. We are tied 7-7, 10-25 to go here in the first quarter. So both teams strike on their first possession. They don't waste any time. Central Arkansas capping it off on their opening drive for Clint Cock. And then the Cowboys answer on the 41-yard touchdown pass from Cody Stroud to his wide receiver, the senior Deontay Spencer. So here we go. We'll kick it off again. Six-play scoring drive goes 75 yards, 229 off the clock for McNeese State. Well, almost a mirror drive. Six plays, 75 yards for the Cowboys. The Bears did it in seven plays in the 75 yards. But I tell you what, both of these teams, Randy, executing at a really high level, and these offenses are humming. Dylan Winfrey is back for Central Arkansas. Plenty of distance on that kickoff. And nothing going there for the Bears, so they will start things off back on offense once again. Taking advantage of that wind, it's knocking it basically through that end zone. Yeah, a little bit of wind behind them, and um, not, you know, it's not going to be. It's just more of a gust, right. but but definitely enough to help uh, help the ball get beyond the end zone and they kick it out that far and set the line of scrimmage at the 25-yard line. You'll take that all day long. We got a four receiver set now for Central Arkansas. Nobody in the backfield. Well, there is now, but Winter Smothers, the senior, back in at quarterback. Dumps it off. Nice pick up there. Uh, 15 yards. It's Ryan. Actually, I'll check that. That's Jatavius Wilson, the freshman wide receiver. Now he's a guy that's already putting up big numbers. He has stepped right into this program first year. 5'9", 171 pounds, as you said earlier, from Bastrop, Louisiana. Does a great job of catching the ball and then run after catch. Winter Smothers again, pass is caught, picks up nine yards, again finds his tight end, Chase Dixon again. Well, I tell you what, Randy, this could become the battle of the tight ends. Chase Dixon doing a fantastic job, as is Nick Jacobs. Both of these guys playing a big role in the offenses in the first two possessions. Chase Dixon, 6'5", 239 pounder from Fort Smith, Arkansas. It's all fans to go with that big body. Yes, sir. Southside High School. Smothers keeps it, crosses midfield, down near the 40-yard line. That's a pickup of nine yards. Tackle on the play by Brent Spikes. Now, Spikes is a guy, as we mentioned, filling in right now. Strong safety for Aaron Sam. Well, Chris Loveless and most everyone else chased the ball and, and really had, was in position to make a great play, but the, that senior leadership of Wimrick Smothers, he pulls it back down on that zone read and executes it perfectly. Smothers over the middle. That pass is incomplete. Covers there at the 35-yard line that by Brent Spikes. Intended receiver on the play. Looks like Clay Murphy was the intended receiver. He's a junior from El Dorado, Arkansas. Second down and 10 now for Central Arkansas. Matthews tries to turn that left corner gets it down to the 35 yard line let's give him six yards on that pickup so again the running game something that's been a struggle for the Bears this season Willie Matthews is the go-to guy coming in just over 100 yards on the ground and so far some success against this Cowboys defense yeah this is a big third down right now you need four four and a half yards let's see what Winrich Smothers comes up with I love the way that he's managing the game, Randy. It's a four-man rush. He realizes that everything's blocked, but there's seven guys deep in coverage. He just dumps it off. That's Blake Beasley with the reception. Yes, yeah, very cleanly out to Beasley. Six-foot, 205-pound sophomore comes up with a nice, it's an easy pitch and catch for the first down. Picks up seven yards, first down. Uh-oh, look out, look out. 
Pass intended for the end zone, just shy of the end zone. That was a nice little play there by Wendrick Smothers who dumped it off to Jacoby Walker who had that first touchdown. He nearly pulled that one off there. Well, uh, you could tell that was a double pass the whole way and, and take a look as Smothers throws the ball and it's definitely clearly behind him. Yeah. And Walker tries to loft it out, trying to find his receiver down, but the coverage there, very good on, I'll call that makeup speed. Kobe Walker. Like Wallace Scott came in and broke that up. Walker's a former quarterback in high school, so throwing the football, he's done that a few times throughout his football career. But again, you see senior leadership here and smarts by Winrick Smothers, Randy. He dumps that ball immediately into the ground. Bo Brown has played it perfectly. The linebacker out of Katy, Texas. Did a great job for the McNeese Cowboys as he was right in the throwing lane and had that ball been thrown to the screen receiver, that would have been picked off and Smothers just alertly digs it right down to the ground. Chase Dixon checking back in. Third down and 10 play now, the market at the 27 yard line. Oh, this Cowboys defense is a little confused. They're gonna call for a timeout, Randy. Got caught a little bit off guard. Coach Vietor alertly calls the timeout. Talk it over here. Third down play coming up. Still plenty of time left here, first quarter. Good turnout today here at Estes Stadium. And one thing talking to Coach Clint Cock, he, you know, he's been around 14 years of this program, had chances to leave, but you know, he said, you know what, I've got unbelievable support here at the school. Very good, nice crowd from the community. And, on campus here today. Well, the things that we've seen too, Randy, here over the last handful of years doing these games is that that there's a call, classic uh, building going on, all yeah. a new construction. So and there's a lot of good things going on here in Conway. Take a look at our Justin's classroom of champions, Lorenzo Gata, senior offensive lineman for McNeese State, All-American candidate, mechanical engineer major. Southland Conference all academic commissioners academic honor roll very active there in the around the campus in the Lake Charles community Special Olympics volunteer as well He's One of our Johnson's classroom champions and Matt Hornbuckle offensive tackle Already graduated currently trying to get his master's degree here at UCA and get it done on the football field as well our Johnson's classroom champions today There's Smothers on the run turns a corner just inside the 25 yard line. They'll mark it close to 24. Picks up three yards, so fourth down coming up. But Wallace, Bears. Yep, Wallace Scott came on a blitz and he got picked up by Willie Matthews and that's what allowed Winrick Smothers the opportunity to break it around to the left side and make positive yards there. And I like the moxie here. Coach Conk and you know, he's might be just a tad out of field goal range. Eddie Kamara, I know he's kind of nursing a little bit of a sore leg. Not doing the kickoffs and we'll Smothers see. is back there to see if he can't pick up a full, uh, fourth down conversion. Fourth and seven. Smothers looking around the 10 yard line. Pretty good coverage there for McNeese State. See who the attended receiver was, the number 88 for Central Arkansas. That's Desmond Smith, the redshirt freshman from Bentonville. Just reached out, got his fingertips on it, so Central Arkansas will. Give it back to me. He stayed on downs here. A good job of that Cowboy defense stiffening when they had to and needed to on that fourth down. It's a big turnover. I get a shot in the arm, too, from an offense coming back out and knowing that your defense held on downs. And certainly when it's down in your end of the field, you want to get the ball back as an offense. There's Cody Stroud handing off Marcus Wilts. He's got running room down that left side. That's a pickup of 25 yards by Marcus Wills, the senior. Well, Randy, you won't see a better block than number 46, Zach Hetrick. Take a look at this as he caves down that side and he creates a wall. And look at Wills. He is downfield in a hurry, but he's able to do that because Zach Hetrick, the tight end, 6'3", 235 pounder, just sealed it off. Super job of blocking there. Little breathing room now. They get it out to the 49-yard line. Second series of the football game for the Cowboys. Cody Stroud, little pressure, gets it off to Wilts. 
he'll get he's brought down to 35 that's 14 more yards on the pass play the completion from Stroud to Marcus Wilkes yeah and, and, and Wilkes is actually pretty well covered by Ricky Wyatt and, and when Stroud took that little bump from the pressure it was his own guy that was blocking but he got forced into him as Cody Stroud got pushed back just a little to his left, he dumps it off and he kept the ball out and away from Ricky Wyatt. Wilts comes up with a great catch and then an even better run afterwards. Wilts again up the middle. Good yardage and offensive line clearing some space. Let's give Wilts five more on that. Wilts came into the football game today 493 yards. So obviously already he's got 46 yards on four carries at long of 25. But probably the lone right stop spot for this Cowboys offense last week against Northern Iowa. I mean, they did not play well, only lost of the season, but Marcus Wiltz had 94 yards rushing. Wiltz again right up the middle. Picks up seven on the play. But how about the offensive lineman Ben Jones? You see number 74 down there. Wiltz ends up running into him, picking up a first down. And that's just, and that's gutty running, and that's getting physical. Great job of helping out from that initial block and then getting up on that second level. Ben Jones, only a sophomore. He's a big one, though. 6'5", 290 pounds. Well, this entire offensive line is a young line that Coach Vietor was talking to us about earlier this week. A young line that's growing up quickly. He says they're doing a fantastic job and they're showing why today. There's Stroud. Running out of room here. He'll take it out of bounds inside the 25. Picks up a couple of yards. Look at downfield. Just nothing there. Good coverage in that secondary by UCA. All right, this won't show up anywhere, but number 20 for Darius Winston for Central Arkansas had a, a heroic, fantastic play. He both covered a man and he forced Cody Stroud run because Cody Stroud was trying to bait him to come up as he was scrambling out so he could dump the ball out over the top to the receiver. For Darius Winston played it perfectly. And Stroud out to Ernest Celeste and he's brought down at the 10 yard line. 12 yard pickup. Ernest Celeste's first catch of the day came in with a couple of touchdowns averaging 17 yards a catch there. Well, a nice job of catching the ball and then running back into traffic, but he has got an armada being led by Renza got him. <laughs> Man, that was impressive. Kelvin Bennett in the backfield forming me state. You'll get the handoff up the middle, big hole down inside the five near the four yard line. Picks up seven yards on the play, so McNeese State, you know, doing they, what they wish on the running game. You, you really like to see a running back hit the hole that hard, and that was exactly what Kelvin Bennett did. But he, he did not wait, he didn't hesitate. He saw the seam of the crease, and he just, that was a good power run right between the tackles. Yeah, Bennett's a 5'11", 180 pounder, played his ball in Newton, Texas, in the Southeast Texas area. Here's Wilkes. Right down around the three. Bobby Likens got him there from behind, but a very nice job again by this McNeese State offensive line. Great increases in seams and third down, Randy, about a yard to go. The Cowboys can pick up a first down, though. They just need about a yard, maybe a half a yard to get inside the two yard line. That'll be a first and goal for them. Pretty heavy substitution now going on by the Bears defense. Marquise Gaines trotting out there late. Well, this defense for UCA had 11 slows coming in. There's a loose ball, and the Bears have recovered at the 12 yard line. What a hit on that play. Ball comes flying out. And the first turnover of this football game. But Dylan Long comes in. He is a power rusher for this Cowboy offense. And I tell you, he got absolutely blown up in the backfield as soon as he handled the ball. Marquise Gaines comes up with it. But let's see if that was Matt Harnbuckle or T.J. Randall. The ball to the front here. Take a look here. As soon as Dylan Long catches or gets handed the ball, he gets absolutely lit up. That is D.J. Holland. DJ Holland is a linebacker who is filling in for Justin Hurd, and man, what a play. Felt that hit all the way upstairs here. Fans love that, and the turnover goes back to Central Arkansas. 
Willie Matthews fights his way to the 15 yard line. Even seven yards on that pickup. Hit right there. I'm sure, a few high fives on the sideline for Central Arkansas. DJ Holland, just a sophomore, 6'1, 230 pounder. Smothers. Pass is caught. That's an 11 yard pickup to Desmond Smith, the redshirt freshman. Big so far today, run game, and let winner Smothers do what he does. Black down on the play back at the 17 yard line. We'll see what that's about. They go get some Central Arkansas. So second down coming up. Head coach Clint Cock, 14 years on the job. And congratulations, by the way. You bet. Picked up his 100th career victory recently. And Two weeks ago, yeah. The last ball game before their bye week. State, yeah. It's uh, 100, 156 in 14 years. All time winning his coach here for Central Arkansas, and that just again, Coach Conn's done a great job. He's a, a he's a he's a very good guy. Blake Beasley with the catch. That's about a three-yard pickup after the dump off of Smothers. Stop like they got that one get away. They're knocking on the door on the turnover to give it back to the Bears. Ball is caught. What a catch of 20 yard Desmond Lewis. Jay went up and got it. He's 6'4. He needed every answer. Uh, he did. And he keep those long hands because he's going to get up there and snag this with his right hand. When Rick Smothers has got to put a little bit of air into this ball and to get it up over the defender. And Desmond Lewis, you expect nothing less. This guy's got 26 catches. Hey, he's impressive. That's a great catch for, and a conversion. Get him up on the first down. Moving in chains. Four yards there by Willie Matthews. Offensive line for Central Arkansas has done a great job of protecting Winter Smothers this season. Giving him time to throw the football when needed. With Willie Matthews again. Tries to cut back. He does. Crosses the 45 yard line. Nine yards on the play by Willie Matthews. Up and they have to move the chains again. Very efficient run. And, and it is one of the things that, that these Central Arkansas Bear running backs haven't yet done, Randy, so far this season in the first uh, five games, is to really get a good, consistent, grounded out attack. Jatavius Wilson, the freshman. And you got to believe when you're from Bastrop, Louisiana and McNeese right there, you just you kind of think that there's it, you do. You, you Obviously, he's going to know a lot of guys that are on, right. on the other well, side. They of recruited the field. him. They recruited him. They yeah. wanted him there in Lake Charles. And Coach Cock and his staff want him over. Yeah, well, but I think that's a, that's a great storyline. And you get a chance to play against your, your former teammates or, former, or, or friends that you had that you played with prior to. How about the lumbering load there by Thomas Hart? 17 yards for Thomas Hart. He's the backup tight end to Chase Dixon. So, Winter Smothers working the tight ends today so far in the first quarter. And a little drag back across the balls on the left hash mark, and Hart catches it when he's just outside of the right hash mark. Made a couple of guys miss. Good yardage. Smothers wide open there in the end zone. Desmond Lewis Good nearly on. brought that one in. Wow. wow. He had some separation there. Little too much on that football from Winters' mother. Well, uh, Desmond Lewis is going to tell you, as most will, that he should have caught this ball. Smothers does a good job. He puts enough air underneath it, Randy. And when you have a route wide receiver that's running out there alone, that's exactly what you want to do is put the air underneath, and that ball goes right through the hands of Desmond Lewis. He doesn't miss many of those, but not able to come up with the grab on that one. Blake Beasley in the backfield now, right behind Smothers. Smothers will keep it. Zone Reed's got running room. 
He takes a hit at the 17, falls forward for a couple more yards, giving 14 on that run for Winter Smothers. Terrence Kenny, he delivered a pretty big blow, but Smothers just spins off and runs around it. Guy Morgan, though, Randy, he's down. He's taking his helmet off and pointing to his right leg. We'll take a break here, late first quarter. We're tied at seven, Central Arkansas and McNeese State. The drive continues when we come back. Every down, every day, every team strives to make their dream a reality. The dream, NCAA National Champion. And let the party begin. Experience it live at the 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship Game. Back at Estes Stadium in Conway, Arkansas, late first quarter. Central Arkansas after the turnover, threatening to hit the scoreboard one more time. We got a first and 10 from the 15 yard line for the Bears. Smothers and Willie Matthews to his right. Smothers looking for the end zone. Desmond Lewis again upstairs, and that one falls incomplete there. In that front left corner of the end zone. Oh, very good defense by Brent Spikes. Take a look. This ball is going to get a little wobbly at its highest point. But Brent Spikes does a great job of coming over the top and smacking it out of the hands of Desmond Lewis. Lock stops with 33 seconds left. There's some others around the 11. Picks up three. It looks like there was a. Miscommunication there in the backfield, so Smothers held on to it. Picks up a few yards. That'll probably slightly do it here with that's the clock ticking away in the it's, first quarter. Yeah, it's, it's a good decision to let the clock run out because that way it'll put the win at your back. Even though you're down close, it's third and seven. The clock will hit zeros here in the first quarter. Third down play coming up for Central Arkansas. We'll take a break. 7-7 here in Conway. Conference opener between the Bears and the Cavaliers. We'll come right back. Every day, kids witness bullying. For you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, You'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change the future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can we transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more 
Persuasive. Yes. You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry? Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on, and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. We're back live in Conway, Arkansas. The band having a good time here today. Great turnout, by the way, for the student section as well. We start the second quarter, and UCA knocking on the door here from the 12 yard line. A big third and seven play to open the second quarter. Blake Feasley just to the right of Windrick Smothers. Smothers over the middle finds Desmond Smith inside the five yard line. Picks up 10 yards on the play. But well, it's going to be enough to move the change, Randy, on an all important third and eight. And Desmond Smith started off on the left side of the formation. He goes in motion. And that allows Winrick Smothers to pick up what the secondary and the linebackers are doing. So he gets a look at that back seven. And Desmond Smith just does a nice little curl route, shows his numbers. He's a big target, comes up with a nice catch in the third down conversion. That's Beasley with the carry. That's a touchdown for Central Arkansas. Wasted the time up in the second quarter. Well, going fast on offense, that's uh, that's kind of the trend now. When you feel like you've got an edge on somebody and you want to go back to back plays very quickly, Central Arkansas chose to do it on that time. And Dominic Allen, the big right tackle, he's coming off. Looks like he's a little bit hobbled. Something we'll need to watch because he's a big player on that offensive front. Eddie Camara with the point after it's up and it is good. So the start to the second quarter, very good for Central Arkansas. They punch it in. Blake Beasley with the honors. Short touchdown run. And the Bears are up by a touchdown. Right now, let's toss it down the sidelines. Let's check in with Brooke Bentley. Hey, Brooke. Thanks, Randy. Well, we saw that touchdown drive was made possible by the Bears defense, and that is something they've been doing all season. They have forced 10 fumbles. They've had 11 sacks. They're coming off a shutout where they shut out the team in the second half. And I asked Coach Ken Klopp, I said, you know, your teams are normally known for offense. Normally your teams put up these huge numbers, but is this team becoming more of a defensive-oriented team? He said it pains me to say so, but yes, the identity of this team right now is about defense. Randy, back up to you. All right, Brooke, thank you very much. Good points. Yeah, they've got uh, both sides covered well, Central Arkansas. they got some athletes. I, I, I tell you what, just go back for the record. Let's just mention that Clint Conk was an All-American linebacker at Nickel State inducted into their Hall of Fame in 2006. So defensive minded, I mean, I think he certainly uh, appreciates the effort that his Bears defense is giving. Jay Stinker will kick off for Central Arkansas. Khalil Thomas is back for McNeese State, and he's joined by Javaris Murray. It'll be Thomas bringing it out for Renice. He's got some running room. Nice hole up the middle, crossing the 30. And that's a nice 31 yard kickoff return by Thomas. Yeah, Terrell Wellmaker makes a really nice tackle just by grabbing at the shirt. And able to bring him down. So, but, but good starting field position. And again, Randy, so far, these defenses have been put under the test because offensively both teams have had a lot of rhythm and they're moving the ball pretty consistently between the 20 yard lines. Cowboys start this drive on the 31 yard line. And off Kelvin Bennett. He even picks up a couple of yards on the play. Uh, lost his footing just a little bit as he was trying to make a cut going full speed and Randy it is worth noting right now you can't tell by what's going on from the television side but but this field 
took a huge amount of rain earlier in the day today and they even had to squeegee the field off several hours before the game and it's still probably just a tad slick. They're out looking about midfield. Looked like that's Kelvin Bennett, the intended yes, receiver again. So he's targeted Bennett a little bit so far early here today. But they like Randy on that play on second down. He ran that little wheel route that everybody hears about you. You go out to the flat from the backfield and then you turn it up the sideline and Kelvin Bennett has a nice throw by Cody Stroud. Bennett not able to come down with that catch, but clearly in an area where he could have made a big play for his offense. Third down and eight now. David Bush, wide receiver, has checked in as well. Cowboys trying to convert. They need to get to the 41 yard line. Cody Stroud, he's got running room, slides around the 37, picks up maybe four. Cowboys going to be a little short here. Well, he changed the play at the line of scrimmage, and this Bear defense, I think, may have fooled Cody Stroud on that particular play, Randy, because he thought he was going to get pressure. They only bring four, and as he is back there, all the receivers were well covered, and then as he tried to run the ball, he had a couple of spies that were standing right around that first down yardage, so Cody Stroud takes a little slide there. Figures that it's better to fight for another day. John Bro will punt it from a knee state back for Central Arkansas. That's a 36-yard punt. That was Clay Murphy back for Central Arkansas. We'll take a break here. Early second quarter in Conway. Good ball game. Central Arkansas leading your knees 14-7. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning is 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash, 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic. And neither do you. Drive responsibly. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back. Television Network. We are live at the University of Central Arkansas where the Bears lead McNeese State 14 to 7 in the second quarter. And I am with the man who makes this all happen, the commissioner, Tom Burnett. Commissioner, how good does it feel to be back on television football to be back here in the conference? Nothing wrong with Southland Conference football. Of course, our 50th season, so we're very proud, but certainly glad to be back on the air with another year of great network telecast. What you and the rest of the crew do for us is fantastic, and looks like we got a great show today. Right, game off to a great start, and you mentioned the 50th anniversary of the conference. Along with that is the 50th anniversary team that you guys are putting together. Talk a little bit more about that because it's neat. Fans can participate as well as media members voting. Yeah, absolutely. You only get one chance at a 50th anniversary. So we're trying to have a lot of fun with it, get the fans involved. Of course, all the experts out there, the media, the coaches, uh, folks that played in the conference once before. And when you go back over five decades, it's a lot of great history, and we're certainly excited. And, and great to have the fans involved as well. And there are even a couple of players who are playing this year that are on the ballot to be voted for in that team, including Winrick's mothers, who's out here today. Yeah, you know, you can't discount the current year among the other 50. So we've got some great players today, just like we've had for five decades, and a lot of players in our league that will be playing on Sundays in the future. Commissioner Burnett, thank you very much for joining us. We're excited to be back on television. Thanks, Brooke. All right, Randy, back up to you. All right, thank you, Brooke. That's Desmond Lewis who just made that catch. That was a 17-yard pickup, and he's 
being helped off the sidelines. We'll see if that's all about. Handoff here to Willie Matthews. Good pursuit there by Benny State. Not much going there for Willie Matthews. Let's take a look at this play again. Here's the pass play, Shay, from Winter Smothers to Desmond Lewis. Takes a hit right there, and that's when he went down. You can tell something was wrong and being attended to on the sidelines. Second down and nine. Smothers looking for Desmond Smith. Nearly brought that one in. He probably would love to have that one back. Well, that was a catch Desmond Smith has made already in this game, Randy, but not able to come down with that one. Not bad coverage by Brent Spikes, but that ball was thrown out there where Desmond Smith had a chance. Again, 6'1", 200 pounder, red shirt freshman. As you said, he would love to have that one back. Third down. And nine now for Central Arkansas. On their own 46 yard line. Smothers around the 50. Well, good defense right there by the Cowboys, keeping everything in front of them, in front of the chains. Coverage on the play there by Terrence Cahey. Hey, he leads the team in tackles with 32 coming into today's game, and Terrence Cahey played that perfectly. Third and long, and it was just a little dump pass down. Good pressure by that front four. Okay, he's team MVP. They rely on him to make plays. Deontay Spencer is back now for Venice. And it's worth noting that the wind has picked up a little bit, and that is a beautiful kick. That's through the end zone. They'll bring it out. We'll take a break. 11.41 to go. First half. Central Arkansas, 14-7. The State Farm Southland Conference Mascot Challenge is back. This year's field is bigger and stronger. Willie the Wildcat. Bruce Deep Mingo the Husky. Red the Cardinal. Big Red the Cardinal. Rowdy the Cowboy, Lafitte the Instigator, Colonel Tulu, Vic the Demon, Eli the Eagle, Rumi the Lion, the Lumberjack, and defending champion Sammy the Bearcat. $5,000 is on the line. Vote for your favorite on the Southland Conference Facebook page. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm on it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're covered, Kevin. Thanks, Melinda. Uh, wait, I have blah blah insurance, so person, come help. Hey, Grandma. Six callers ahead of us, Jimmy. You're not helping. Having insurance is having State Farm. You anytime, anywhere, anyway. That's getting to a better state. Contact your local State Farm agent. Back live at the stadium in Conway. 14-7 lead for the Bears. You just saw the uh, promo there for the State Farm Southland mascot challenge. Shay and I were looking at that uh, commercial. There's a chance to vote. Facebook.com backslash Southland Conference. And we all have our favorites. And yes, we do. We enjoy that commercial. Some great mascots oh, in the league. Look at that hit. Tough he, run there. Just keep Marcus Wiltz, he is going there. Marcus Wilt went down and kept moving those legs. And he's brought down inside the 10 yard line. We'll see where they mark it. You 75 <laughs> yards. We thought he was down there. And hey, we talked about his touch. running prowess. 94 yards last week against Northern Iowa. Probably, the, arguably, the lone bright spot for this offense. But take a look at the shot that he's going to take, Randy. I'm not sure if he takes it or if he gives it. A little bit of both right there. But that is a very physical run. Knees never go down, and that's great. Great heads up. Heads up by Wilson. Yeah. The whistle's not blown. Never gave up on the play. As you said, runs it right down inside the 10-yard line. Actually, it's inside the five. 
He's got four touchdowns what so far this year, nearly out of fifth. He'll try to finish it off, and he does. Marcus Wilkes, well deserved. You know, he got him most of the way. Why not let him finish it? But I tell you what, that was uh, just a great response right there. And again, I love the hustle by Wilkes, not giving up on the play at all, even though he was sitting down on top of a defender. Neither knee was down. Very alertly just hops up and continues to play and puts his team in scoring position and then gets a chance to finish it off. Good scene there opened up by a big Nick Gorman up front, the center for McNeese. Quentin Marsh in there on that left side. Help. Ooh, got a little hooky. Let's see if it they stay inside. Yeah, that's good. That's Ryan Rome born after. Hard to see from our vantage point, Randy. We've got a pretty big cement wall here to our right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why my neck hurts? I'm trying to reach around. Yeah, you can't quite. I can't quite see the scoreboard. So two plays, 80 yards, took all of 36 seconds. There are the numbers by Wiltshire. Eight carries, 136 yards. But it's a great job. He is a second-team All-Conference guy. He's three. He's 307 yards away, Randy, coming into today's game for 2,000 career total yards. And when you talk about being second-team All-Conference in the Southland Conference with a guy like Tim Flanders. Second team all conference isn't all bad. Not bad at all. Good conference. You got two good ones there at Sam Houston State. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they're in the backup. And Gus Johnson's doing a great job over at uh, Stephen F. Austin. I mean, yeah, you've got great good running backs, backs here. You bet. All right, so McNeese, the Cowboys, McNeese State has opened. Uh, got this touchdown here and tied things up. 14 all here in Conway. Randy, I'd say so far so good as the weather goes, but it is worth noting that the wind has picked up and it is blowing from right to left. Freshman Jatavius Wilson, he'll field it at the seven yard line. Wilson brings it out. He's got speed. Shakes off one tackle approaching midfield and out of bounds. What a nice return of 43 yards by Jatavius Wilson, the true freshman. Well, I believe it was Terrence Cahey, number 11, who was the guy that slowed Wilson up. And had he not done that, Randy, that would have been a touchdown. So good special teams played by both of these units. Well, you look at the last, what, four years or so, this, this rivalry that's brewing between oh, these. Man. These are tight games. I mean, four points or less when these two these two teams get together over the last four years. So they're used to tight, close ball games that go down to the wire. But in, in last year, Central Arkansas scored 10 points within 47 seconds to pull out a victory against uh, McNeese down in Lake Charles. Smothers over the middle. That's Jatavius Wilson again, the freshman. Out of bounds around the 42 yard line. Picks well, he's up six. exciting to watch, isn't he? He really is. Get the ball in his hands and to come off the field, get a little bit of a breather. Well deserved. Toss it down the sidelines, check in with Brooke Bentley. Brooke? Yes, Randy, just an update on Desmond Lewis, the Bears receiver who is out right now. You can see him with a wrap left ankle. It is in ice, and I've heard that he got rolled up on and that his return is questionable. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Brooke, for the update. They're going to miss him if he can't return. He came in with over 300 yards receiving Desmond Lewis, so it's a deep receiving core, but he's one of the go-to guys. Yeah, he definitely is, and he's got a big frame, 6'4", 212 pounds, so I make that one-handed grab to convert for on the first down, so he will be missed. Yeah, Willie Matthews is running tough. An extra yard on that one. 32 yards rushing so far today. And we talked about the weather at the top of the show. The, bro the broadcast, you know, the sunshine right now over the stadium. But look that direction. I believe that's northwest. And the temperature will be dropping. And precipitation might be on its way here to Conway, Arkansas. Beasley in the backfield now for the Bears. Over the middle, wide open is Chase Dixon. 26 yard pickup on the pass play, smothers to Chase Dixon, his tight end. I mean, you talk about Beasley in the backfield, he does a great job of stepping up and protecting Winrick Smothers. The Cowboys dialed up a blitz. 
Beasley stands right there, strong at the line of scrimmage, and he knocks a linebacker off that allows Dixon to come open and Smothers to get the ball out to him. Beasley brought down, met at the two, and down he goes. No gain on that play, so second down and goal now for Central Arkansas. Tied at 14 here. Plenty of time left second quarter. Lincoln Cox program on a 12-game winning streak here on the stripes at Estes Stadium. And they'll tell you it's 13 home games, but 12 on the stripes. Yeah, but I guess they won their last game here at the stadium before they it was a grass surface when it put this down. Smothers kind of tripped, and that ball is picked off at the one-yard line, and we're going the other way. This could be a 96-yard return. It's Ryan Bronson, there's no flags down. Bronson trots in for a McNeese State touchdown. Rated edit play is completely because when Rick Smothers slipped, and Ryan Bronson stayed at home. Combination of both, but that's a huge play for this Cowboys defense. That's two times now that we've seen each team knocking on the door and then a turnover. This one obviously relates to a score or translates to a score as soon as it happened, but great job by Bronson. One interception coming into the game today. His second interception of the season and return for a touchdown is at a 99 yarder 96 yard return Ryan Rome on the point after attempt for McNeese State Kick is up and the kick is good We'll take a break With 833 to go in the second quarter McNeese strikes quickly on the 96 yard interception return Taking it to the house. Cowboys up by a touchdown. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything, it is I, Groove's Zinker Pen. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Back at Estes Stadium here in Conway. Injury update for Big Knee State. Jay and I are watching Everett Ellison. It's the starting defensive end, one of them at least for Big Knee State. Five sacks of the season that would be a big blow if he can't return but he's arguably the best down lineman that they have randy on this front seven and i can tell you what he was laying down i'm gonna say just stone cold out it looked like in there i don't know where they're working on it he was able to get up he was helped off the field but if he is not able to return that would be monumental for this cowboys defense Dylan Winfrey, number 23, back for Central Arkansas. Four clouds starting to roll in here to Conway. That's going to be a short kick. 
That's fielded at the 33-yard line by Willie Matthews. Oh, no. <laughs> he, he said, wait a minute, I wasn't touched on that. Well, fair catch. Fair catch was made, yeah. Called it. Actually, I'm not sure that the fair catch was called, but it should have been because the ball was popped up straight in the air. And Randy Higgins said, the wind is picking up. The officials very quickly blow the whistle on it. Again now, Ellison certainly not in the game. Daniel Hunter, number 96, has come in the defensive end spot. And off to Beasley. Crosses the 35, 37 yard line. Let's give him four yards on that pickup for Blake Beasley. So they're really mixing it well. This Central Arkansas rushing attack. A little bit of Willie Matthews, Blake Beasley contributing. Yeah, Justin Burdett checking in, a slot receiver, and Wimrick Smothers trying to get over the top and kind of get this play and this offense going. Shea Nutt checks in for the Cowboys in that secondary. Mothers again looked like he tried to fix up two. It looks like he did. He tried to plant. I, you mentioned earlier that Turf Kill still could be a little dab down there. It might be hard to plant now then. Well, he's just running the zone read. Chris Loveless, number 99, doing a great job of coming off the edge and forcing Winrick Smothers' decision and forcing the ball back into the middle of the field where the rest of that Cowboy defenders are waiting. Big third down here. About four, four and a half yards are needed. to chase Dixon is tied in around the 50 takes a big hit that's a pickup of 10 yards the change will move for the Bears well what a safety blanket chase Dixon is 6'5 239 pounds and just doing a great job he ran out there in front of Guy Morgan he's he's got five inches on Guy Morgan big target Smothers delivered the ball nicely it's it off to Dixon again he's met at the 45 yard line it's a pickup of five Tackle made on the play there, Bobby Knee State. That's Brent Spikes again filling in nicely so far in this first half. Defensive coordinator Lance Gidry for the Cowboys dialing up a little bit of pressure right there. And Smothers had no problem in handling. He had two defenders in his face. He just tosses it right over the top of their head and drops it in the bucket of Dixon. Smothers has running room inside the 40 yard line. Six yards on that keeper by Smothers. That's a tough run right there. There it was. Guy Morgan met him. See Abe moves it now. Marks it at the 39 yard line. Smothers looking for the deep ball in the end zone. Pass is caught. That's Damian Watts. 39 yard touchdown. The Thomas Hart. The tight end lined up on the right side. It looked like everything was going to be power right. Wimmick's mother starts just, he gives a little glance over to the right. And then he locates Damian Watts, 14 catches and one touchdown coming into the game today and runs that skinny post route perfectly. There's a big grass, a nice grab there in the back of the end zone. One after attempt by Eddie Camara. It's up and good. Well, right, that's kind of what we expected out of this game today. <laughs> no shortage of offense. That's for sure. Quick strike offense. So far this afternoon. Here's a look at it again. Smothers. That's great protection up front by that bare offensive line. And he just drops the ball over the top of the safety inside the cornerback. Outstanding run or outstanding catch there, excuse me, by Damian Watts. Ran right past the safety. And that's what that skinny pose does. When you have to flip the effectively the run game then that draws that safety it holds him down for a step to a step and a half and that's exactly what happened there safety for McNeese comes up Watts gets behind him on that skinny post route and comes up with a big touchdown grab for his team 
right, you say it'll kick it off right now. Let's get an update from Brooke Bentley on the sidelines. Brooke. Well, guys, I was over on the McNeese State sidelines to ask about Everett Elkson, and I was told he has been taken down into the training room to be evaluated. He left the field. They don't really want to give much information about his injury. They said his return is questionable, so there is a chance he could come make it back on the field. Guys, back up to you. All right, thank you. Brooke, yeah, Everett Ellison, one of the standouts on this D line for McNeese State. Belil Thomas around the 15 yard line. He'll bring it out, crossing the 30, 35, down to the 36 yard line. A 21 yard kickoff return by Khalil Thomas. All of a sudden, look at our conditions now a little bit. Yeah, yep, the clouds, clouds from the northwest are really coming in here. Starting to move in, Randy. Wind has shifted, starting to swirl a little bit, but it has definitely picked up. And what used to be a bright sun shining on the field, now it's completely under the clouds. Stadium lights are now on here. Elvin Bennett with the carry from Indy State. Loses a yard on it. As we get the six minute mark here, second quarter in Conway. We mentioned earlier, first home game since late August for Central Arkansas. They opened the season here, they've been on the road, then had the bye week. So it's been a while since these fans got a chance to come out and support the Bears here in Conway, and they've shown out in a big number today. Good crowd here at the stadium. They always get good crowds here in Nesta Stadium. Great venue. And off of Bennett again. Oh, lost stumble his forward. Feet. Lost his footing again, Randy. It's a maybe three yards on that. See where they mark it. Yeah, it looks like it's going to give him two yards on the pickup for Kelvin Bennett. Third down and eight now coming up from Indy State. Trying to look for that conversion. Tied at 21 here at Estes Stadium today. Dijon Mitchell checking in for the Cowboys offense. They took Nick Jacobs out. Big tight end and they're running John Mitchell out there. He's a senior, 5'11", 185 pounds. Got up there on the trips side. So you got three receivers at the top of the screen. Cody Stroud finds Celeste. Good yard after catch there. That's a pickup of seven. Oh, that was Dejan Mitchell. Yep, the guy that checked in yep. did a good Eight job. He, he played at that uh, inside spot on that trip receiver side. Did a good job of finding a hole in that Bears defense. They only rushed three guys, dropped eight into coverage. And I really like the poise of Cody Stroud being patient, stepping up in the pocket, delivering a perfect pass. And Gilbert Celeste and Dejan Mitchell along with the tight end Nick Jacobs. Uh -oh. A little trickery. He got Here we wide go. open down there is Jerrion McGilvery. That's a 46 yard touchdown strike. How about that? The touchdown pass from Deontay Spitzer. A little trickery again. Wait a minute. Isn't that the exact same play that we saw the Bears try from almost the exact same place on the field? That's just, right, that's just right with Jacoby Walker. A little bit. That's right. Jacoby Walker tried to have that attempt. Yeah, Jeremy Gilbert comes up with his second touchdown on the season. And, man, the offensive output today, Randy, we're in the first half. These numbers are mind-boggling. Ryan Rome, point after attempt from McNeese State. And it's up and good. A quick strike by McNeese State. All smiles on that Cowboys sideline. Well, you love it when a play that you work that hard on actually works. Lorna Celeste, take a look here again. Cody Stroud, he throws it out there perfectly. Yep, I said Celeste, that's not that Spencer, Deontay Spencer. He's, he knows that as soon as he lets go of the ball, it's going to be a perfect pass. Take a look. We see him start to hop, start to jump a little bit. But Gilbert runs right underneath it. It's an easy waltz into the end zone for the touchdown. He just lost it right there, didn't he? 28-21 lead now for McNeese State. Yeah, Tim Legger, the offensive coordinator, seventh year. Matt Biatar in his eighth 
here at the Hale Cowboys. 56 25 record. And you know, this, this McNeese State team, it, it was interesting to hear Coach Comp talk about McNeese, Randy, and the, and the rivalry. Our, Central Arkansas leads this series 4 to 3. But the last four games have been absolute barn burners down to the wire finish. I mean, like I was saying earlier, Last year, Central Arkansas skin scored 10 points in 47 seconds, and they needed a 47-yard field goal by Eddie Kamara with 23 seconds left to win the game in Lake Charles. So, barn burner, but Coach Conk said, hey, when we play McNeese, they're the gold standard. McNeese has been in the Southland Conference right. for the longest. They have 13 Southland Conference championships to their credit. And it was uh, just you know, interesting to hear. Program Absolutely. Bro with the kickoff. Off the hands of Tavius Wilson, so the Bears will get it back here. Coach Cock and his staff wondering what took so long on that kickoff. They're trying to encourage the officials. Let's get this thing rolling here. 412 to go in the second quarter. First half. Been a wild first half. A lot of offense between both teams. Well, these offensive have both been very impressive. And again, you go back into the schedule. McNeese, they scored 53 points at South Florida. They scored 58 against Arkansas Pine Bluff, 44 against West Alabama. Only scored six last week against Northern Iowa, and that was uh, a little bit of a disappointment there, but they're capable of putting up big numbers. Pass is caught, Chase Dixon. That's a pickup of nine yards on the pass play from Smothers to Chase Dixon. Tell you what, he's had a great first half as Chase Dixon. He had eight catches coming in to the game, and he's uh, he's probably getting close to eight in the first half of this game. What a good hit there by Terrence Cahey. Three yards on the pickup by Smothers. If he picks up enough for the first down, but Terrence Cahey came up and laid a pretty physical shot there on Ludwig Smothers. Hey, from Westlake High School, Westlake, Louisiana. Well, C.J. Simon, Randy, in that offensive line, doing a great job of pulling and pushing out a great seam right there to allow Willie Matthews to hit it back up in the middle of that defense, picks up the first down. Running room there by Willie Matthews. Big gap up the middle. Give him 15 yards on that pickup. Willie Matthews had himself a pretty good first half. Yeah, he certainly Conway. is. He's got 106 yards rushing coming into the game today. That's through four games. He's, he's running the box extremely well, running very physical. On his way to a 100-yard day here for Central Arkansas this afternoon. Smothers in trouble. He'll keep it. He's got some space out of bounds near the 25. A 12 yard pickup on the run by Winrick Smothers. Clock stops with 255 to go here, first half. Well, that's good protection at the point of attack. You see the big guys, DJ Appy, helping create that pocket for Winrick Smothers. And Winrick is just so athletic once he gets outside the tackle. Randy, this uh, Central Arkansas offense is freely substituting guys coming in, and one of those that has just re entered the game is Chase Dixon. He's on the short side, the top of the screen there, lined up in the tight end spot. Fell down on the play, and if you look at it again, Desmond Smith uh, uh, had a chance to haul that one in. Starting to get a little bit of rain coming down. You can see some of these loyal patrons either popping up umbrellas that have them, and the ones that don't are sliding down the stairs to try to find a little bit of cover. Pass 
fourth attempt broken up around the 15 yard line. And trying to get a flag on it, but it's not going to come. Great coverage there. Blocked off of 204. Lamar off to, you know, this is a year where Lamar looking hey, to uh, turn the corner, three and two star for the Cardinals. Four-year uh, four class there at Lamar Ray Woodard. Right. He wins for Nichols, and then we'll be down in uh, Thibodeau next week for a Nichols ball game with Northwestern State. Devaris Murray, Four knees has the football. He's got running room down the right sideline. Inside the 30, 20, knocked out of bounds near the 10 yard line. 67 yards on the play. Well, your big senior offensive lineman, let's see if you can't get a stop here. And we're looking at the replay. Got stop it here after he catches the ball and starts to turn it up the field. So good job by Stroud. Being paid, take a look at number 77. Takes out two 
Arkansas Bay defenders, and that's what allows the big game. And that, I tell you what, that was an impressive actually run after catch, Randy. You talk about just Jarvis Murray doing a great job of turning that upfield and not losing sight of where it was he was going. And off to Murray, right up the middle. Touchdown Cowboys, 12-yard run. Javaris Murray with the honors from Indy State. the goal line, the rain comes down a little harder yeah. here at Estes Stadium. And yeah, the bottom opened up on this one right now. That was an impressive drive by the Cowboys. Getting downfield in a hurry. After stopping the Bears offense over, or turning the ball over on down. 35-21 lead. Take a look at some of the offense. We've seen a lot of it here so far in the day, especially by the Cowboys. Yeah, just a great job of blocking up front. You see Ben Jones, a sophomore. Again, we've been talking about him a couple of times. Man. He does a fantastic job of falling off and sealing it. Kendall Thomas does also a couple of nice job. So two good blocks right there. And Jarvis Murray does a great job of kind of being patient, waiting for it. And then you see when he made that cut back to the right, it was just a waltz into the end zone. Replay 76 yards, 36 seconds. That's all it took. So the Cowboys up 35 21, and we go back to the long win streak here at home. This is something UCA takes a lot of pride in protecting. Yes. And seniors don't want to lose this streak. And there's other goals, obviously, for the season, but protecting the home turf is important. It's a big deal. I mean, and they've had such a good run for the last 12 home games. And they've come from behind. We were here last year when the Central Arkansas team was trailing Sam Houston State. And at the time, Sam right. Houston State was ranked either number one or number two in the country. And they had what seemed like a comfortable they lead. But yet the Bears came back quickly and, and won that game. Right. And that was, uh, hey, like you said, it's, a, it's definitely a home field advantage. And these guys know it. So minute 23 to go here first half. If you're on Coach Cox's sidelines, what, what are you thinking here? Give it a couple of shots and see if you can get something down there? Or? I think you have to. Look, we're in, we're in a shootout right now. And in the offensive, it really, this would be a seven-point game if it weren't for that one TD return for a touchdown. But you know what? You're trailing by 14. you got to get points. And you're going to have to get points all game. Pass is caught over the middle. Great and way to start. Matthews. The master one. Picks up 18 yards. And you know who I spot down on the field? Good news for McNeese State fans, uh, Shay. Everett Ellison, number 94, back on the field for the Cowboys. He had left with that. Checked out, but he's out there. He's five. That's it. And that pass is intercepted by Kevin Dorn of McNeese inside the 40 yard line. With a minute six left here in the first half. I say I like throwing the ball. I like throwing the ball further down the field. Trying to hit, hit Willie Matthews out with just a little bitty short pass. The Cowboy defenders at the line of scrimmage go up and get the hands of And big Kevin Dorn comes down with the interception. Minute five to go. And that's the way things have been going today. That's plenty of time for uh, Especially when you have State. 40 yards to cover. They've had one play. Longer than 40 yards. What a potential. Yeah, absolutely. What a potential big blow this would be if McNeese can turn this into points. Marcus Wiltz. In the field. A touchdown, Deontay Spencer. We talked about it would take long. That didn't take long at all. Yeah, great job there, Randy. I tell you what, Cody Stroud, you talk about the maturity, and that's what Coach Vietoro was telling us. We'll see it on the replay. He gives a quick little pump fake, and that's what holds the defenders. Deontay Spencer runs right behind all of them, and then it's a perfect delivery by Stroud. Ryan Rome, point after a tip coming up. Again, a big blow to Central Arkansas here at home on the stripes. 
as the Cowboys extend the lead to 42-21. Just under a minute to go, first half. So very opportunistic of the offense. Again, we talk about Tim Lager coming up and doing what he wants you to take a look on this. And take a look at Cody Stroud. Watch this little hit. Boom. You see that little shoulder? He pushes it down, and that freezes the safety, and that allows Deontay Spencer to run just pretty much unfettered back in the backfield and gets behind the backers. Looks like an easy pitch and catch, but I tell you what, Cody Stroud, that's something that you work on in your sleep. He executed it perfectly. Well, McNeese State has put up points so far this season. Averaging 40 points per game. That is eighth nationally. You know, they got blown out last week in Northern I Iowa, but they've put up points this year. I was going to say, they're averaging 40 points a game, and they only scored six last week. Right. That tells you that, something. Yeah. The 41 to 6 loss in Northern Iowa. Perhaps the wake up call for this Cowboys team. A team that started the season with that victory over South Florida on the road in Tampa. Huge. That was a great win. And, and you know, Coach Vietar talked about the importance of that win because it is FCS going against FBS automatic qualifying. And the margin of victory made or in that game was also a record. So a lot of positives came out of that and a lot of confidence for these Cowboys. Sports Network poll, North Dakota State, two-time defending national champion, 4-0, Sam Houston State after that victory over Eastern Washington. He is now number two. And here you see McNeese, number 11, Central Arkansas, number 14. Southeastern receiving a vote in this poll as well, so good representation by the Southland Conference. Yeah. But, how about Ron Roberts and the job he's done down there? And Terrific Hammond. job at Hammond. We'll have their game later this season on the network as well. We'll make the trip to Hammond. I believe it's Sam Houston State at Southeastern. If I'm correct. Late, late. I think it's one of the last games that we'll do. Absolutely. Pretty good one. Well, he's instilled a winning attitude there. And he continues to recruit. Got the community support going down there in Hammond as well. And Strawberry Stadium, a good home field. Kind of like, you know, when you think about it, a good home field, right? Yep. That, the Lions haven't been a dominant team, but with, with what Ron Roberts has done in trying to instill that type of character that you were talking about earlier, and then you start talking about getting the community, getting the fans back, and winning over uh, the student body, and then you start talking about the home field advantage, and, and it really starts to kind of take hold and really uh, take on a life of its own. Mothers over the middle, pass is caught. What a stairs and got it. Picks up 17 yards on the play. Now the 40-yard line of McNeese. And Blake Gardner, young man in a civil steal. High school in the San Antonio area. Nice grab. Smothers spikes the ball. Here's that throw to Gardner. Running that crossing route, goes up. Knows he's gonna take a shot. He's a player, if you and I both had a chance to see him in high school. Great program there in the San Antonio area. Smothers, feeling the pressure, gets that one off. Uh, probably going to bring a flag, yeah. and it's because it was behind, behind the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage. Yep, didn't make it to the line. There's, Matt, there's Coach Vietor right there pointing to where it went out of bounds. Yeah, flag it down. So here's the deal. The, 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 the challenge for the officiating crew on that was, was did he get hit and the ball redirected because it was very close. It's kind of one of those what they call the bang-bang plays, and they were making sure, and that was a great job of this officiating crew to confer, get the side judge in, talk to the umpire, talk to the referee, make sure that you got the angles right and say, well, no, he didn't get hit. He did throw it out, but it was behind the line, and that's what brings the penalty. Two twenty-one. All Big D State here in the first half. 
take a look now if we can at the Southland Conference TV Network schedule. And as I mentioned, we'll be down in Thibodeau. Jay Thomas, the uh, new head coach there at Northwestern State, going back. He's got some roots there at Nichols, doesn't he? He certainly does. And he's got roots in the Southland Conference, Northwestern State as well. Following the week, Nichols uh, paid a visit to Nacogdoches, and then October 26th, back here in Conway, Stephen F. Austin in Central Arkansas. Right, uh, Reliance Stadium. What a great game that's been over the last couple of years. And it really has. The attendance keeps going up. And understand ticket sales are, have already been brisk for that fall game in early November. And, you know, 26, 27. They'd like to hit 30,000 if possible. And plenty of alumni in that greater Houston area from both schools. Nine seconds left here. You're down 42 21. Central Arkansas. They're smarters. Looking for the deep ball. That's going to be short. Might be picked off. Nearly was at the five-yard line. Falls incomplete. So the clock is showing zero, but the officials are putting one second back on the clock, and Coach Vitor is going, come on. Really? Yeah, 1.3. They're putting back on the stadium clock. <laughs> it's like, well, you're kidding me, right? One more attempt here. Well, you've got these big athletic receivers for Central Arkansas, and then you saw there were plenty of defenders down there for McNeese, but when that jump ball comes, the first guy's not trying to catch the ball. He's trying to tip the ball. Let me see if they can get us another shot. Pass is caught inside the 35-yard line. 31-yard pickup. Pass brought in by Courtney Whitehead, his first catch of the day, the sophomore from Athens, Texas, transfer from Air Force. But that will do it in the first half. And the McNeese State Cowboys. Domination here at Estes Station in Conway, Arkansas. They lead it 42-21. Let's toss it down the field. Check in with Brooke Bentley. Yes, I'm with Coach Vietor. Coach, what an offensive output in the first half. We talked earlier this week about your offense being most successful when it's balanced. What kind of balance have you seen so far? Well, we've got some good balance so far. I think the biggest play of the game was a pick six by our defense. You know, that kind of really they turned the momentum of the game and uh, gave us a little bit of momentum. Cody Strouds, a quarterback really who's somewhat gone under the radar in this conference. We also talked about that. Is he making a statement in this game so far? Well, we're just trying to win one game in Conway, which we never have. But there's a lot of really good quarterbacks in our league, and there's two of them playing today for sure. All right, Coach, I'll let you go. stay dry. <laughs> Good luck in the second half. It is letting up, you guys, so maybe we will have a drier second half. I'll send it back up to you. All right, Brooke, thank you very much. 42-21 lead. The raincoats are out here at Estes Stadium, but we got plenty of football left. Started off 7-7 game in the first. McNeese outscoring Central Arkansas 35-14 in that second quarter. They'll go to the break. In control, 42-21 in Conway. So what we've been looking for since last year. Winning, that's the most important thing. It takes a lot of hours, it takes a lot of commitment. Where every season starts with the same goal. It's the goal of every team. It's the reason each week they give everything they've got. Each team strives to make their dream a reality. The dream become the very best in college football. But only one team will earn the ultimate title. NCAA National Champions. What a great atmosphere. Experience it live. The 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship game. Game day begins outside the stadium at Tailgate Town, a free event where college football fans and families get in on all the action. Any fun? Test your skills, meet the stars of the game, and enjoy the pregame party as the anticipation to kick off builds. From the moment the players arrive at the stadium to the post-game championship award ceremony. Thank you to the best fans in America! You can be...
be part of history, cheering on the nation's best. The 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship Game, Saturday, January 4th at FC Dallas Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Affordable tickets available. Go online at NCAA.com slash FCS and reserve your seats today. Make a date with champions and experience it live. It's that feeling you get, that sense of complete trust and assurance that they will always be there for you. And when that happens, it's easy to fall in love. All it takes is the Go Deposit mobile app, your iPhone or Android, and a split second to fall head over heels with Mid-South Bank. And here's the best part. It's free to qualified customers. Now you can do your banking from wherever you are, even long distance. Let us show you the love right from your smartphone. It's time to love your bank. Mid-South Bank. Serving tech. Texas and Louisiana. This is the Mid South Bank Top Time Report on the South Link. This is the Mid South Bank Top Time Report on the South Link Conference Television Network. We've reached the break in Conway between Matthews and Central Arkansas. We'll get you back to UCA for more from Randy Shane Brook in a few minutes. Hey everyone, I'm Megan Clementi and welcome to the South Link Digital Network Studios. September is now in the rearview mirror, but the final week provided us with more outstanding performances. In football, last week's showdown in Huntsville was every bit as exciting as we expected, while in soccer, there are still two unbeaten teams in league play. And in volleyball, it's a foursome of undefeated conference squads. Two of the top four teams in the FCS collided in Huntsville, as number four, Sam Houston State, posted second-ranked Eastern Washington. Not even a weather delay of more than an hour could dampen the spirits at Bauer Stadium. DeAndre Locke went 42 yards with a pick six early in the second quarter, and SHSU was up 21 to 13. But the day belonged to Timothy Flanders and the Bearcats offensive line. Flanders rushed for 280 yards and a 60-yard sprint to the end zone early in the third quarter. It was the first of two touchdowns on the day. Sam Houston State makes a statement with a 49-34 win over Eastern Washington and climbs to number two in the Sports Network poll. Following McNeese CCA, Southeastern Louisiana hosts UIW in the only other game on this week's schedule. The Lions enjoyed a bye week after knocking off Stamford 34-31 in an intersectional SCS showdown. Since then, Southeastern has added a major asset to its defensive front. Junior D tackle Markel Combs transferred from Kansas and has been cleared to play. The 6'3", 295-pounder was rated the number three junior college player in the nation last season by ESPN. Moving to soccer, entering this week's games, there are only two unbeaten teams remaining in Southland play. Oral Roberts is 3-0, while Central Arkansas is 2-0. Nichols, on the other hand, ran its score record winning streak to eight games before stumbling versus UIW. In a battle of unbeatens, Nichols hosted Abilene Christian. After a score of ACU in the second to take the lead, but the Colonels netted three unanswered goals and won 3-1. On Sunday, the Colonels' streak came to an end and UIW made some history of its own, winning its first Southland Conference match, the final 4-2. Oral Roberts has the best record in the conference, and it looked to build on that as Texas A&M Corpus Christi came to Tulsa. It looked like the match was headed for overtime, but ORU got a goal from Mary Kay Halsmer in the 87th minute, and the Golden Eagles win 2-1. They're now 3-0 in Southland play. In volleyball, there are still four teams that are perfect in conference play, led by Sam Houston State with a 5-0 mark. The Bearcats did not drop a set this past week, starting with a 3-0 win at home over Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Then on Saturday, they hosted Houston Baptist and also came away with a 3-0 victory. That's their eighth win in the last 10 matches. In cross country, Nichols Tessney Carruthers set a new school record in the 5K by winning the women's individual title at the McNeese State Cowboys Stampede this past Saturday. That earned her Female Athlete of the Week honors, 
UCA's Edward Limo earned the male award thanks to a win at the Rhodes College Invitational in Memphis. Remember to get updates everywhere you go by downloading Southland Conference app for iPhone, Android, and tablet. I'm Megan Clemente. Thanks for joining me on the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report. Next up, we'll head back to Conway as we get set for the second half of Mackinac versus UCA. Stay tuned for more of the Cowboys and Bears right here on the Southland Conference Television Network. Think of the NCAA as a spirit squad cheering for student-athletes at every big event and every small one. We'd be there in the classroom, at graduation, at their first job interview. Okay, so don't think of us as a spirit squad. Think of us as a mascot. Well, just know we're always there for student-athletes. The Bears 42 to 21, and you can see the band playing behind me. A lot of festivities going on here for the game. But also, there's a place here on campus that could be the loudest, maybe even louder than the band behind me. It's the Print Center, and it's where the volleyball team plays. And here, you're going to learn what makes it so hard to play in when you go to the Print Center and you're an opponent of the Lady Sugar Bears. The great thing about being a bear in the Print Center is that you're basically on top of the other opponents. Uh, they come here and you can reach out and touch them. I actually got in trouble because I was waving my flag too close to them and I guess they didn't like that, but it's all part of the atmosphere. Uh, the greatest thing is it gets, it gets really loud. It might not be the biggest or fanciest arena, but it's probably one of the loudest just because of the proximity of the students to the other team's bench. Yeah, the Print Center is pretty unique. Uh, everything's just close packed for us to get all in there, uh, all in one section, right up right up behind uh, the opposing team and just give it our all and just get as loud as possible. With it being so small, it gets louder than any other uh, arena just because everything's compact, everywhere else is pretty big and just so spread out. So we just get as loud as possible and we get, give, it, give them our all. Yeah, as far as, far as volleyball cheers, we like to we just keep it chaotic and just give them everything. Um, usually, uh, one tradition that we usually do is at the end of the game, when we're, when we're up and it's game point, we start to slow clap at the end. And it's just to get everybody fired up. Um, so that's kind of it as far as uh, yelling and yelling goes like that. By far the best crowd we've ever had. It was awesome having, it was hot in there, but it was the best feeling in the world to have that many supporters and like that many people there for us. And it was just such a great feeling to play in the trance and have everyone there. Oh yes, I feel, I feel like if I were on a different team, I would be scared to almost play in the, in the Prince because everyone's like literally a foot away from you, like getting excited. Like, they were just awesome tonight. I think that playing in the Prince is definitely a huge um, benefit for us and our team. Um, you know, it's so small, it's so compact that it gets really, really, really loud. You know, completely scared to come in and play at the Prince just because it is so, it's literally standing right on top of you. 
So um, I think, you know, compared to other places that we've been to, you know, the gyms are a lot bigger, and um, it honestly doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of people in there. It doesn't get as loud. Therefore, um, you know, it is different for us to come in and play teams like that, uh, with gyms like that. But um, playing at home is definitely, definitely a huge benefit to, um, to our team. It's definitely really nice to have other student athletes and support. Um, we do the best we can to go and support them. And um, it's just a close-knitted group of athletes that come and um, support us. And it's, it's really nice. It's nice to see. And that was Katie Davis reporting, putting that great package together. And also of note, the volleyball team sweat SFA earlier today, so that team on a roll. Well, to hear more about what's going on this campus, Randy McAvoy has a special guest. Randy, I'll send it up to you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Brooke. Appreciate that. Joined by the president of Central Arkansas, Tom Courtway. Uh, good to see you again. We spoke uh, last time we were here. Good to see you. And Thanks. The weather, we think, might cooperate in the second half. We don't know yet, but a, a fantastic crowd here today. Yeah, we were real pleased. Yeah, we thought how, the whole day might be a washout. So, yeah. uh, good good uh, crowd. We're glad y'all are here. Welcome talk, to Conway. Talk Let's about uh, just the, the upgrades that have been made around this stadium. We, we drive into the campus. We enjoy coming here each and every year. Uh, you talk about the suites that y'all added recently, not a year ago. Sure. A year ago, the, the fans love those, and just the, right. the support you're getting in the community has been tremendous here. For right, the we, we have a great uh, football venue, and we have a great crowd and uh, student support. We appreciate that. The community's really gotten behind us, so the Skybox suites have been a, a phenomenal success, and uh, we just wish for a little bit better weather. But uh, all in all, we're pleased with the crowd today. We should, this school was a little different, but it's a tribute to McNeese State right now. We got a second half ahead. You, you've been the interim president on uh, two occasion but now you are the full-time president acting president here since december of 2011 how exciting has it been to see the progress this university has made in all facets including enrollment it's uh it's been phenomenal we're, we're very excited about the future our enrollment uh, this year was over 11,500 it's up over 400 from the year ago so uh, we're making great strides we're doing some uh, expansion of our fitness facility and we're talking about some new academic buildings down the road, so we're very excited. And, and last question here, 20 seconds or less. You're talking about this, how, how pleased you are with the Southland Conference and being in this. It's a perfect fit for UCA. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Texas, Louisiana, now Oklahoma. Uh, Commissioner Burnett and his staff do a great job. Y'all do a great job covering it. So it's just a natural fit for the University of Central Arkansas. We're, we're very happy. Good to see you as always. Talk to yeah. president of uh, Central Arkansas. Appreciate you being here. You. Best of luck second half. Thank you. Have some fun to stay dry out there. <laughs> we're going to. 42-21, that is the halftime score here at Estes Stadium in Conway. Plenty of football still to come. And more halftime activity straight ahead here on the Southland Conference Television Network. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. But it wouldn't be safe to keep your distance until the first secret goes off to make you smile. The sources say that chicken soup has proved they found their way out of this. Mm. 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 Closer to nature can get you closer to your family.
to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report here on the Southland Conference Television Network. It is a rainy and now getting cooler day here in Conway, Arkansas, where McNeese State leads the Bears 42-21 to at the half. A lot of activity in that first half, a lot of excitement, so I'll send it up to Randy and Shay for all the highlights and stats. All right, thank you very much, uh, Brooke. Appreciate that. We'll get the second half started uh, momentarily. Uh, if you like offense, this is your day here at Essen Stadium. How many total yards approaching 1,000 already between these yeah, two? In the first half of the game, man, it's just been a, a barn burner from the very beginning, of course. Central Arkansas starts off scoring, and then Winrich Smothers comes in, and he is able to locate receiver running deep, and it, it, it was a very Darian, watch there. comfortable, yeah, Darian, they've been watching all that, but very comfortable, but then all of a sudden, Marcus Wilkes comes back, and this McNeese team starts to churn, and here's a huge one, Ryan Bronson takes this one back, 98 yards for the touchdown, and that was really the spark in New York, Coach Peter Tortell Brook, as he was going into the half, because that was a big play for us, and just a really a dominating performance by McNeese as they started kind of getting into their groove. The defensive touchdown help. Deontay Spencer here coming back, and that was after Kevin Dorn picked off a pass on a one-play scoring drive for the Cowboys. And again, you look at the offensive numbers, you can throw the time of possession completely out the window right now, but you just a lot of good stuff going on for both of these offenses. 496 yards for UCA, 410 for McNeese State. We'll see if it slows down at all. But McNeese State having their way so far, leading 42-21. Halftime is wrapping up. Mid-South Bank Halftime Show. We'll be ready for the second half here at Estes Stadium at Conway. Coming up on the Southwest Conference TV Network. McNeese is a school of opportunity. Over the last 75 years, we've been Fulbright Scholars, Pulitzer Prize winners, Emmy Award winners, and Medal of Honor recipients. We've come here from all over the world. McNeese has been pioneering opportunities you won't find just anywhere, like the Innovation Engineering Program, a state-of-the-art meat processing and production facility, and a modern chemical plant. At McNeese, we are celebrating the past and pioneering the future. At the University of Central Arkansas, I've encountered world-changing academics and game-changing athletics, helping me become a regular on the Southland Conference Honor Roll. I was able to graduate early with a business degree, and now I'm seeking a second degree in physical education, all while playing Division I volleyball, softball, and soccer. UCA put me and my education front and center. Learn how at uca.edu. Back here at Estes Stadium in Conway, Arkansas, ready to start the third quarter here. 42-21 lead for McNeese State. Both teams have talked it over. We'll see what kind of adjustments have been made. Central Arkansas will kick it away first to Jarvis to Terry. McNeese State. Back deep and really this uh, Cowboy team, Randy, hot first half. I mean, you know, comparable yards, if you will, by the two teams, but the point difference by McNeese State. 42 in the first half. Khalil Thomas will bring it out near the goal line there for Mini State. Running room. Brought down and met around the 25. Lunges forward for a couple of yards. 26 yard return by Khalil Thomas. 42 21. So the Cowboys get ready. Try to add to it here to start the second half. Probably worth mentioning that the weather conditions have changed and not just because of the cloud and the rain, but it's gotten probably at least seven to ten degrees cooler now than it was at kickoff. Wind has changed directions as well. As you can see the flag there on the north end zone here at Estes Stadium. Hand off. That's Marcus Wilkes. He's on his feet still, Randy. Yeah, he's Wilkes just moving him. <laughs> yeah, doesn't go down. I mean, we saw him in the first half. I, I just had made a, just a, a footnote. He needs 307 yards to get to 2,000 career yards in the first half. He gained 135. Over 
600 yards yep. so far on the season. See that flag with yeah. Opposite direction as it was early in the game. It wilts again. Slips a little bit at 35. Picks up a yard. Yeah, going to mark him down just short of the first down. So if you're Mini State, you, you got the big lead. Do you change your approach at all? I mean, you had a pretty good balance there in that first half. No, I, you don't really change the approach. I mean, it, it really is all about balance. And you, you said that word, and it's perfect for the offense. You want to maintain balance and, and make sure that you stay in the rhythm. Nothing uh, going there. Good pursuit. Ball comes loose. Bears have it. We'll take it to the house. We'll see if the flag is down here. A little celebration, perhaps. Well, T.J. Randall comes up with a huge stop right at the line of scrimmage. This is the second time, Randy, we have seen that was a bear defender fill the hole. Dylan Winfrey picked up the fumble. He didn't make the hit. D.J. Holland did it earlier down near the goal line. A couple of flags are down. Yeah, he was kind of high step into the end zone, uh, a little showmanship there with a couple of officials right next to him. That could be why the flag is down around the one yard line. And if that's the case, I'm sure he will get a nice little chat from co head coach Clint Conk on that one. See if we can take another look at who's down on the bottom of that pile. Yeah, it's number 46. I thought that may have been 57. DJ Holland, Randy, that is two times that he has come up and just absolutely brought the house. And laid it on a running back for McNeese, forcing the forcing the fumbles. Bring it Brooke, Brooke Bentley now down on the sideline. Brooke, what'd you see down there? Well, of course, the coach is very upset with that call, but this is actually something that's very rare. Only the second time in NCAA football that this has happened where a touchdown has been taken away because of celebration before the player enters the end zone. The other time that it happened was at LSU last year. A punter celebrated too soon. So uh, those are the two times, a very rare occurrence, what we just saw. Guys, back to you. Yeah, I, I, I there's some others in trouble. Somehow gets that football off. And that's going to fall incomplete. I thought it was a, a good call. I mean, he was before, well before the end zone. He was high stepping in, and you just can't do that. Uh, he really can't. But take a look at Chris Loveless, number 99, Randy. He pours. He's blocked, but he never gives up on the play. He just continues to push. Take a look down at the bottom of your screen. You're going to see him pushing his, his blocker <laughs> right over the back. And that was Willie Matthews trying to block the big defensive end. Heck of a play by Chris Loveless. Second down and 10 for the 19-yard line. Smothers over the middle. Tended receiver was Damian Watts around the five-yard line. And Winter Smothers hobbling as he comes off the football field. And checking in for Central Arkansas is Ryan Howard. The backup quarterback. We'll see what's up with Winter Smothers. He's being attended to on the UCA sideline. The defensive ends for this Cowboys defense. down on the quarterback and Rick has taken a couple of different I'll call them odd looking shots pass is caught at the eight yard line that is Blake Gardner of the catch went down and got that what a great grab by Gardner he just kind of sat down and the ball is thrown a little awkwardly Ryan Howard, a little lefty, he locates Gardner down there, and he just throws it and sticks it right around the knees. Gardner goes down, fields it cleanly for the first down. Watching Smothers on the sidelines, he's limping on that right ankle, so we'll see if he gets that uh, addressed by the training staff. Hand off there. No gain on the play. 
Michael Ware on the stop there for the Cowboy defense. So that's a perfect example. If you're, if you're the backup quarterback in football, you better be ready because just like that, you, you could be called upon. And there comes Ryan Howard hustling out the minute Smothers came hobbling off the football field. So he's got trips receivers to his right down on the wide right side of the field. And looking back again, he's changed the play now twice, trying to locate the linebacker. Where's the pressure coming from? Willie Matthews gets back in the pistol. And off there to Willie Matthews. Ellison doing a great job there of closing down off that defensive end spot to bring Matthews down. Really drags him down from behind. Matthew picks up about two or three yards, but Ellison doing a great job of driving off, taking a great angle and getting to the running back in the backfield. Big third, third down here. Third down and goal now for the Bears. Howard, the junior from Vestavia Hills, Alabama, trying to get the Bears in the end zone. Rolls left, wide open, touchdown to his tight end, Chase Dixon. And I said this earlier in the first half, that Chase Dixon had eight catches coming into today's game. And I said he might be close to that total. He just notched his eighth catch in this game, and none bigger than that one to lift the spirits of the Bears on the, on the field and the stands and the student section, the band. One after up and good. A much needed touchdown by UCA. Early third quarter. Things are tightening. We got a lot of football left here at Conway. We're coming back on the Southland Conference TV Network. Your mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Ooh. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Something to celebrate for 42 28 after that touchdown. They get the turnover on McNeese's state's first drive of the second half, and they take advantage, they punch it in. And 42 28 looks a lot better than 42 21. Is this the feeling you have that hey, you're back into this football game? Chip? Tell you two scores down, as you said, Randy, a lot of time left on the clock, and really getting a defensive score, if you will, off the turnover. Really, who with these uh, Bears from Central Arkansas, and you certainly know that that's what the coaches were talking about in the half. Central Arkansas will kick it off. Honors go to Jay Stinker, sophomore from Bryant, Arkansas. Bryant High School. And back for McNeese is Khalil Thomas and Javaris Murray. It'll go to Khalil Thomas. Around the two, three yard line, and out he comes crossing the 20, down to the 25, maybe the 26 yard line. So the Cowboys will open up their second series. 
here of the second half. Right now, let's toss it down the sidelines. Check it again with Brooke. Yes, Randy, an update on Winrick Smothers, the Bears quarterback. I've been told by trainers that he has a right contusion, a contusion on his right shin, and that he will be okay. They are going to let him play. Now, what could hurt as much as that contusion is that Smothers threw his third pick six of the season. He came into this game with six interceptions. He only had nine interceptions for all of last season. So Smothers getting some words of encouragement from Clint Cox as he came over to look at the injury earlier, and hopefully we'll get back into the game. Guys, back up to you. All right, thanks for the update, Brooke. Appreciate it. They need him out there, but job well done in his absence by the backup Ryan Howard leading the Bears to that touchdown. Two yard pick up there on that play. Dylan Long, there to those yep. Dylan Long. Backs, Marcus Wilkes, Kelvin Bennett, Dylan Long, kind of running back by committee. Wilkes, obviously the guy, but Bennett is checking into the game and Dylan Long checking out. So they go down to nine now from the 27-yard line. And Stroud with a completion to David Bush. Well, that's up eight yards. DJ Holland played that, Randy. Bush tried to stop short and thinking that he was going to have Holland run past him, and then he was going to cut it back up and try to pick up the first down. But DJ Holland, did it. this is a linebacker running with the slot receiver, mind you. And he does a great job of just kind of going under control and not allowing the receiver to cut it back up and pick up the first down. Still in long, still in the backfield. That's one of the first times that we've seen Cody Stroud go under center. Yeah, kind of an odd look to it. We hadn't seen it all day. Time out to Cowboys. We'll take a break, 10.41 to go here in third quarter. Estes Stadium in Conway, McNeese State leading Central Arkansas 42-28. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. It's that feeling you get, that sense of complete trust and assurance that they will always be there for you. And when that happens, it's easy to fall in love. All it takes is the Go Deposit mobile app, your iPhone or Android, and a split second to fall head over heels with Mid-South Bank. And here's the best part. It's free to qualify customers. Now you can do your banking from wherever you are, even long distance. Let us show you the love right from your smartphone. It's time to love your bank. Mid-South Bank, serving Texas and Louisiana. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say, I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky! Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to contact your local State Farm agent. Back here, Estes Stadium at Conway. Rain jackets are out, but right now, we're okay. Catch, yeah, catching a break right we now. We are. You see the clouds out there, but they may have dodged this for the most part. Hey, McNeese. Followers. Good representation there in the stands. Third down and two. Dylan Long stretching, trying to see where they marked that one. Hey, he's going to be short, Randy. Yeah, his knee went down. He'll mark it back at the 35. So it's going to be about a yard short for McNeese State. Uh, there's no no second thinking about this at all. That VFR get the punt team on the field. What does that mean for Central Arkansas? You got a couple. You got a turnover. Now you have a stop. Back-to-back -back series now. Well, yeah, if it, if put in the middle of that turnover and stop, Randy. Your offense put seven points on the board. Now you're turning the ball back over and having an opportunity to get your offense back on the field. So that was big. John Bro back to punt for McNeese. Clay Murphy 
for Central Arkansas. Fair catch is made around the 37 yard line. Short punt, only a 29 yard punt. So now you look at the Bears. They've got excellent field position coming up. Still early third quarter in a 42 28 game for the Clinton Cox Bears. Winter Smothers, helmet back on. and Talk about a contusion is what uh, Brooke was reporting, and I, I can tell you, contusion to the shin, I mean, you know how sensitive the shin bone or that area is, I mean, it, a mild, con I don't know, you grade contusions? Slight contusions? I just contusions. don't hurt, mild contusions. <laughs> you know it hurts. He seems yeah, to be in good spirits out there, and I mean, he seems to be, you know, not noticeably favoring it. So that's uh, that's certainly a good sign. Let me just wrap a little tape on it to get on the back out there. Yeah. Yeah, so got to keep it warm, though. And like I said, maybe the temperature has dropped here. It is a little cooler, and when you have those types of things, and you sit on them, or they, you don't, you're not acting. Starts to get a little, uh, gets a little dicey there. Head coach Clint Cock, again, as we mentioned, 14 years leading this UCA program. What a great job he's done. He's gotten him into the playoffs the last couple of years. Well, he just went on and on the other day during our conference call. Just, you know, just the administrative support he receives here. It's a school that continues to grow and. You know, they believe in athletics and having a winning program and, you know, getting some of his needs met. Not all of them, he said, but, sure. you know, some of these needs met to compete and continue to make progress. Bears get it, and they will start now on their 37-yard line. There's Smothers. He'll keep it up the middle, crosses the 40, down at the 42-yard line, pick up a five yards on that keeper by some others. Well, Wallace Scott in on the tackle, and I, I can tell you, man, when you have that sore, I, you, I'm wondering if, if Coach Conk is having Smothers run the ball right now just to make sure that he is back, that he picked up seven yards, six yards, heck of a run on first down. And off Willie Matthews, got got space basis. as well. Good patience before he, he starts, Randy. He's running hard to his right, and then he just kind of felt his way along that offensive front and slid in behind C.J. Simon. Picked up the first down. 15 carries, approaching a 12, 13-yard shy of 100 on the day for Willie Matthews. Northern Iowa got a score to pass along nationally. Yeah, I think is it what Northern Iowa and uh, North Dakota State teeing it up today? You bet you look at that. Yes, still a lot of time left in that game, but North Dakota State, the two time defending national champion. Northern Iowa, of course, beat McNeese State a week ago. We'll see That's it. a number five team and the number one team doing battle. We'll update that for you as it progresses between those two. Great program. Smothers nearly picked off on that play around the 45 yard line. Coverage by Gabe Hamner. Hamner got a ham on a hand on it. You're ready right now, and I think this is the first time we have seen Aaron Sam is back into the game now for the Cowboys. And keep in mind he had to sit out in the first half for targeting last week. And now he is back in the game at that. Covering the inside slot receiver, number 21. But definitely a, a very good defender for this Cowboys defense. Well, this pass is caught by Courtney Whitehead. Whitehead picks up 20 yards. Whitehead, the backup to Desmond Lewis, is out of the game. So that's a big catch here by the sophomore. Well, the high angle spray by Desmond Lewis, which is a big loss for this Bears offense. But when Summers has confidence, he goes back to the sophomore, Courtney Whitehead. And Bo Brown from McNeese saves a touchdown. Whitehead had broken through two McNeese tackles and was going to go into the end zone. And Bo Brown snags him by the legs and drags him down. 
That's is caught by Jatavius Wilson, the freshman. He's Boy, out of he bounds. Is fast. He really is. You look up and he's picked up another 10 or so. He's down to the 22. Tell you what, you look at the entire receiving course, Shay. You've got Lewis, who's a junior, Whitehead, sophomore, Gardner's a sophomore. It's a good group that's going to be around for a few years. But uh, it certainly is. And, and you think about the uh, the prowess of the development of the wide receivers. And there's been some good ones who have played here, but there's some very good ones on the field now. Second down and three now. They'll mark it at the 23 yard line. Smothers changing the play, and he is under center. Looking for his tight end, nothing there, and he'll throw it away. He was trying to find Desmond Smith around the 10 yard line, but good coverage by that secondary of McNeese State. Oh, Hayden Dobbs did a great job for the Cowboys defense. He took a pretty big shot. We could hear it up here, Randy, in our booth. And stayed with the, the with the wide receiver, excuse me, with the running back who was trying to get out into the flat, Dylan Hop or Hayden Hop, Dobbs, excuse me, stuffed him at the line, and then he put the pressure on Smothers, forcing the uh, the throw away. The third down play for the Bears. Third and three now. Smothers nearly brought in there. Chase Dixon is tied in around the seven-yard line. Coverage on the play by Terrence Cahey. Brings up fourth down, and Eddie Camara will come out for a field goal attempt for UCA. It's going to be about a 40-yard attempt now by Eddie Camara. And you want to get points. Keep chipping away at this deficit if you're Central Arkansas. On the season, one of two is long being 42. This is a 40-yarder. Pick is up, and it had pulled right a little bit, wide right, and McNeese will take over after the missed field goal. 7.52 to go, third quarter. Estes Stadium in Conway. McNeese still leads 42-28. Every day, every team strives to make their dream a reality. The dream NCAA National Champion. And let the party begin. Experience it live at the 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship Game, Saturday, January 4th at FC Dallas. Fresco, Texas. Affordable tickets available. Visit NCAA.com slash FCS to reserve your seats today. Seven minutes to play, 42-28. Cowboys now at the 45-yard line of UCA. Trying to answer it that missed field goal by Eddie Camara. Early touchdown here in the third quarter by this Bears defense, or offense, I should say, after the defensive uh, interception. There's Stroud. Yeah, it's flag. Be a flag. Yeah, we got a flag down around that area as well. Trying to find Wilkes on the sideline there, and flag comes down. Got to tell you what, that protection by the front five for the Cowboys offense doing a great job of giving Cody Stroud a lot of time. Blake Childress flag for pass interference. 
Coach Clint Cox, not happy with that. Ball looks to be a little bit underthrown and probably going to call Childress with that right arm over. Yeah, tough call there. First and 10 now from the 30 yard line. East State knocking on the door again here, third quarter. And off Marcus Wiltz. Marcus Wiltz on carry. Up the middle, let's give him two yards on that pickup. Wiltz averaging 98 yards uh, per game coming in. He's already over 100 on the day. 13 carries, 114 yards. Had that big 77-yard run. It's helped the cars. He'll gladly take those numbers. Well, and McNeese has been perfect, if you will, almost perfect. 21 times in the red zone, 20 scores. Wide open pass there to Wiltz. And Wiltz will race in for another McNeese State touchdown. 28 yards on the pass play from Cody Stroud. Wilt's doing a fine job of recognizing the defense, knows that he's uncovered, and take a look at Stroud. He's looking that way. He knows that he's going to get there quickly. He did the count in the box, just a blown coverage by the Bears. And Wilt's waltzes in for the touchdown. Four play drive, 77 yards, minute 59 off the clock. One after attempt coming up for McNeese nice State. And Ryan Rome with the honors. Left footer knocks it right down the middle. The extra point attempt is good. And it's now. 49-28 lead now for the Cowboys. Coming off that loss a week ago to Northern Iowa. They came to play in Conway today. The contingent of Mini State fans have made the crowd, made the crowd, have made the trip here, I should say, to Conway. Looks like they nice have up there. Away. Yeah. Got a little rhythm going. I call it the Lake Charles Hustle. <laughs> Looks like they've done it before, at least. They're all, they're all on scene. You know, Matt Vietor, you talk about what he's done. And one of the things I find most impressive, Randy, is that there are seven, including Vietor, there are seven McNeese former students on the coaching staff. Hey, you talk about continuity and understanding what the team is and understanding how to kind of motivate the guys and what the resources are, just all of those things. That's a heck of a job to have seven former students on your staff. John Bro will kick it off for Mimi State. And back for Central Arkansas. Once again, will be Jatavius Wilson, the freshman. And a short kick around the 20 yard line. That's Willie Matthews, I believe, that brought it out for Central Arkansas around the 35 yard line. Still down right now. Really slow to get up. Yeah, he's a little bit slow. He's uh, on, the, on the field there at the 25-yard line, or 35-yard line. Let's toss down to Brooke Bentley now. Brooke? Well, Randy, you mentioned it earlier. Aaron Sam is back in the secondary for McNeese State, and he, of course, sat out in that first half because of the targeting a violation that he committed in the game before. Well, I asked Coach Vietor what he thought of the targeting rule. He said he thinks it's a good rule. He said the problem is he's had two players who've been suspended because of violating that targeting rule. And he said the real thing is he's really working on his team with making sure they understand that rule. Hayden Dobbs had to sit out earlier in the year. So Vietor said, yep, it's a good rule. We just are working on making sure our players get it a little bit better. Guys, back up to you. All right, thank you, Brooke. Good to have you back out there. Talk about the targeting rules, and, and we had a chance to, to talk with uh, Byron Boston uh, earlier this week to kind of understand the ruling and, and kind of what they're looking for out there. Well, it, it, it's the intent of the rule, which is uh, being interpreted, and it also gives a little bit of heartburn because seemingly there's a fair amount of subjectivity in it, but at the at, at the FCS level, Randy, without instant replay, when you call a targeting, that means the player is immediately ejected, and then there's not a review process to where that player can be, you know, reinstated. So it's uh, 
It's a little bit of finesse, I, and I agree with Coach Viator with, with what Brooks said, and most coaches that we've talked to have all said the same thing. The, the reality is, is that's a good rule, and you want to protect the players. It's just kind of getting off the off of the, the, the starting block, if you will, mm -hmm. on how it's going to be implemented and how you're going to manage and measure the uh, the penalty and the flag. So, I mean, because sometimes, let I me mean, think about this at the FBS level. When you see a targeting call, and then they go back and they review it and say, okay, well, the player's not ejected. Well, okay, if the player's not ejected, why is there a 15-yard penalty? Right. So right. there's still some finesse points that have to be worked out. Five-yard pickup there on that play, crossing midfield. It's Blake Beasley. Let's update that North Dakota State, Northern Iowa game. That's an upset in the making oh. by North Dakota State. The Bison. They've come back. They have regained the lead, 24-23. Three minutes to go, fourth quarter. We'll continue to update that one for you. Of course, oh, nearly picked off there. Gabe Hamner. That was Hamner again. He almost had one last season. Just really, that is great man to make in the eyes of the quarterback and going right through the receiver, Damian Watts. And you know what his buddies are going to tell him when they watch the film. Why didn't you have that? No, 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 not why didn't you have it. Because they, that's why you play defense. <laughs> Leave a good hand to the it, offense. It's just, it, look, it, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. He made a great play. Just not able to come up with the pick. Deontay Spitzer back from McNeese State. Fair catch is called for around the 10-yard line. That's where the Cowboys will take over. 37-yard punt by Jonathan Harrison. So, I mean, East State already up 49-28. 54 to go third quarter. Let's talk about the fall championships coming up now in the Southland Conference. Of course, during football season, a lot more going on. Shay, November 1st, cross country in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And then a week later, you got soccer there in Lake Charles. A lot happening there on the Denise campus area. And volleyball at Corpus Christi on November 22nd through the 24th. Brooke Bentley knows all about volleyball. You betcha. She's on the volleyball crew when the conference championships were here. And we talked a little bit about her career in high school and college. She used to stand out at Davidson University. And uh, had a great time. And Southland Conference won a national award for their volleyball broadcast from the conference championship. So congratulations to the entire crew for that. And the Cowboys calling a timeout here. Brady, that's a pretty big deal to, uh, to really have for this Cowboys defense to come up with the stop there, force the punt. And have an opportunity to possess the ball again in the third quarter. Reminder coming up the 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship FCS, Saturday, January 4th, 1 o'clock kickoff at Toyota Stadium in Frisco. For more information, check it out, NCAA.com backslash FCS. Last two years, North Dakota State, Sam Houston State in that championship game, and the Bison have Walked away with the hardware. Sam Houston State trying to get back for a third consecutive year. But you know what? You got to get through a very tough conference. And we're seeing some of the talent on display here today. Well, you know Willie Fritz will have those guys dialed in to every week as it goes through the Southland Conference because it is like running the gauntlet. And off that's Deontay Spencer again. Six-yard pickup. Spencer turning that corner. Good speed. And knocked out of bounds there. Second down and four play coming up by the Cowboys. Melvin Bennett checks back in now for McNeese State. Brody Stroud under center. Again, I haven't seen that a lot. There's Bennett. He's tripped up around the... 17, 18 yard line, pickup of two yards. See so like the Cowboy offense, Randy, fairly content to go in with that two tight end for 
formation. Get a couple receivers out wide, one running back. You pick up a first down or two, and then you start to kind of open up the offense a little bit, but you want to get past that 20-yard line. See McNeese nice State really milking every second possible on the uh, play clock. You got a big lead, you just want to play it. Absolutely, heads up. Play your game, but play it safe and eat some clock up. McNeese nice State calls a timeout. Used up a little too much time. It's her second timeout. Third timeout. 3.48 to go third quarter. So Matt Viator will talk it over with the guys. What we got going on in conference today? Yeah. Down there in Hammond tonight. It could have worked taking on Southeastern. We talked about Coach Roberts and the job he's doing. So future Southland Conference opponent there. Cardinals. And here's a look at some of the new programs. This is an exciting time for the conference to get you the bet. 50th year anniversary. And you got new additions on the way starting in 2014. What stands out to you? Well, what stands out to me is the new addition, old addition. Abilene Christian was an original member of the Southland Conference when they had five teams 50 years ago. And now they're back in the conference this year. I think that's outstanding. Houston Baptist also underway this season. And Abilene Christian as well. And be a fun future here for the Southland Conference starting next year. Well, a nice job by Nick Jacobs. Cody Stroud put a little bit of mustard on that ball, and it was a low liner. The 6-5 tight end handled it cleanly on third and three, picks up the first down. Elvin Bennett, a sophomore in that backfield again. He'll get the handoff. Nice good patience on the he's cut just, there. He's just really quick out there, isn't he? Picks up three yards. He's just shy of the 30-yard line for Kelvin Bennett. Bennett's from, as we mentioned earlier, Bleakwood, Texas. Went to Newton High School. And that's in that southeast corner of Texas. Actually, not too far from Lake Charles. Most famous running back to ever come out of Newton High School. Self-declared by me. That'd be one Anthony Byerly. Rush broke with 3,000 yards in high school, signed at the University of Texas. Yep. Played for the great Coach Barbe. And he, Curtis Barbe, he yeah. too did. Well, not able to hang on to the ball. It was Mel Kelvin, Benny, excuse me. And so now, a little bit of a Kind of a little bit of a hitch in the giddy up on the offense. Seemingly like they were moving it pretty well, getting to third and short, but now yeah. they've got third and about seven yards for the first down. And the tight end package went out, wide receivers are in, so you got trips up top and twin receivers at the bottom of the formation. Third down play, Cody Stroud looking deep around the midfield area. Pass was intended for David Bush. Good coverage on the play, no flags down, so. Fourth down play, and the Cowboys will punt it away to Central Arkansas. Clay Murphy back for UCA. John Bro will punt for McNeese State. He's from Scott, Louisiana, Katiana High School. Goes out of bounds around. Let's see where they mark that inside the 30. About 33 yard line. 38 yard punt there by John Brooke. That's the all time greats. This is a exciting time. And Commissioner Burnett talked about it at halftime, Shay. Down the conference, all time football teams. Look at these nominees. These are big names that have been great quarterbacks in this conference. Well, they certainly have, and I mean, they are just a sampling. Don't forget, Stan Humphreys is on that list as well. I mean, there's quite a few guys on there, and there's, a, there's an opportunity to write in. So, for the, the, the folks who, you know, look at that and they say, hey, wait a minute, we've got, we've got guys like, uh, nope, like, uh oh, hang on a second. 
mothers. Nobody home there around the 25 yard line looking for his tight end Chase Dixon. Good coverage on play by the secondary of the Cowboys. There's Kahee on the coverage as well. Uh, Smothers doing a good job of getting the ball out, Randy, but the defense downfield is fantastic. Big hit at the 40 hit. yard line. That's going to be Blake Gardner. Or that Blake Gardner? No, it wasn't Blake Gardner. It was Desmond Smith who took that hit around the 40. We heard that one from upstairs. Uh, it's just one of those plays where you see the wide receiver running down and Leon Lewin comes up, 16, just squares up, measures the receiver, and plays a big hit. There's another hit. Gabe Hamner right. by the 36 yard So line. the quarterback that I was trying to think of. Yeah. Scott Stoker. Northwestern State. You got it. Yep. I mean, there's a lot of great quarterbacks that have played in this conference, and there's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to have a chance. Well, you got a couple of them still announced. playing that'll be considered all-time greats when they're said done, doesn't it? Yeah. Hannaway and Brian Bell and Sam Houston. They got some good ones. Yeah, Jerry Moses. Jeremy Moses kind of set the bar, if you will, for the conference. Uh, Walter Payton Award yeah, winner, and it's uh, pretty heady stuff. Couple of big sticks by this Cowboys defense, so Central Arkansas will punt it away. And back to receive is Deontay Spencer. Fair catch there at the 25 yard line. 38 yard punt by Jonathan Harris. So here comes McNeese State back at it now with a minute 20 to go here, third quarter. Well, the Bears defense, Randy, started off this half in a, on a very positive note of turning the ball over, going in and scoring a touchdown. Looking like they were going to get back in this game, cutting it to two scores, but McNeese has been very patient in continuing to dominate on that offensive front. Notching another score to stretch it out to another two or three score lead. It's Wilt around the corner. Wilt's having a good day. In well over 100 yards. Wilt's came in. Just shy of 500 for the season, but he's now got 126 on the day on 14 carries. And that long 77 yard run, one touchdown. DJ Holland again. Again. <laughs> Randy, he has played so well in for Justin Hurd. I'll tell you what. Only a sophomore. This kid can play. I love the way he played. He has had two bone jarring hits where he's forced fumbles. And you, I, you, you love it when you have a linebacker who can fill a hole like that. That's just outstanding. And Finals. North Dakota State yep. hanging on. Little rally late in that uh, football game in North Dakota State. Little nail biter with two. Outstanding program between them and Northern Iowa. 24-23 was the final number. 16-yard pickup on the completion from Cody Stroud to Ernest Celeste. This is one of the things that Stroud has really improved in his game. Is he knows he's going to take a shot, Randy, but he also knows that he has a wide receiver out there, and he stands knowing that you're going to get smashed, and he throws a perfect pass to his receiver. And Celeste, we've not mentioned his name much, but this guy's averages 17 yards a catch. Time runs out, third quarter. We will take it to the fourth quarter here at Conway. 49-28 lead has been all Cowboys in this one today. What's in store in the fourth quarter? We're going to find out when we come back to Estes State. Every day, kids witness bullying. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Silla speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. 
But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change the future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me, the King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on, and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. People think I'm trash. They're all. Today I'm just an aluminum can. But one day, I could be a stadium. Welcome back, Estes Stadium here in Conway, Arkansas. The cheerleading crew from Lake Charles making the trip here. They've had plenty to celebrate today. And Cowboys hoping to do the same here when 15 minutes rolls by. They got the lead, but you never know what happens. Things can change quickly. Bruce DeBear right there hanging out. Still full of energy today, Shay. That's one of your favorites. It's a good, this is a great game day experience for the fans, student body. Do a great job here in Conway. Fourth quarter underway now. They'll mark it at the 48-yard line. And Vinny State trying to put this one away up 49-28. Well, Wilkes just hammering that ball right in the middle. Not much give by that Bear defense. Looked like no give, but no gain. Big bodies up front. Matt Hornbuckle, T.J. Randall, Marquise James. Cody Stroud, 20, making his 28th start today in his career. Better quarterback. He's had 10 TD passes now in 11 consecutive games and his third all-time in completion for the Cowboys. Yeah, Wilkes is dropped by Wilkes there. Well, Stroud came in, Shea, 5,864 yards in his He's got, uh, what, 252 today. See numbers by Marcus Wilkes, but Cody Stroud with 252, so. And he's been he's, durable, uh, too, Randy. Over 6,000 now for his career in these days. Yeah, and, he, and he's been a very durable quarterback. This really is his has. 28th consecutive start. And, and I really like what Coach Viator had to say about him and how he's grown. He's gotten stronger. His footwork's gotten better. I mean, those are all positive things. Out on the move, he's going to be hit around the 45-yard line. Picks up three yards. You mentioned you mentioned touchdowns and consecutive starts. You know that's uh, tied a record with another great quarterback, Kerry Joseph. There, 94-95. It was on our list, I think, for one of the all-time greats candidates here at uh, Pretty handy Company. Southland Conference. We've got an injured player for Central Arkansas. Let's go down to the uh, field check-in with Brooke Bentley. Brooke. Well, I'm here with Bruce the Bear, who's getting quite the workout in on the exercise bike. And he has to stay in shape because we have the State Farm Mascot Challenge going on right now at the Southland Conference. You can vote for your favorite Southland Conference mascot. You go to the Facebook page of the Southland Conference. You can vote for Bruce here. He's getting, like I said, such a good workout in during the game. And um, the winning mascot wins $5,000, a $5,000 scholarship for the school. So a great thing that State Farm does with the Southland Conference. Vote for Bruce. Uh, right now, actually, let me tell you who's leading. We had the Lumberjack leading, so Bruce needs your vote. And last year, Sammy the Bearcat was the winner. So uh, lots of fun stuff going on from the sidelines here. Guys, back up to you. Yep. Just monitor him down there, Brooke. Make sure
sure he's getting into work, you know, because he, he can't let up. He's got to keep it going down there, Bruce DeBear. But he does get a little bit of a drop on the rest of the mascots because it is the first conference game on the South of Conference Television Network. Right. So Bruce is uh, pumping it up and getting it out there. That's right. It will, I'm sure we'll see him here in a few weeks when the network comes back to Conway. Back at it again. Lumberjack's pretty popular. Uh-oh, uh another interception, Randy. Yeah, picked off there. Winrick Smothers picked off on the play by Guy Morgan. A really ill-advised throw by Smothers. I mean, was that so, pass tipped at all? He's I, trying to make something happen on the screen play, and really Guy Morgan, only six foot tall, just kind of was hiding down there amongst all the bodies. No Ends up with the catch. Take a look here. Smothers is going to look off to his left. Yeah. He's getting pressured. And really his uh, receiver looked like he was blocking Justin Burdett, who was blocking. And Guy Morgan was watching the ball, so they didn't have anybody looking for the ball. And Guy Morgan comes up with his second interception of the season. His first one he returned for 76 yards and a touchdown. First and 10 now for Meniz at the 17-yard line. And off goes to Kelvin Bennett. Right, and I am taking this right now, and I'm going to tell you, I want DJ Holland on my team. <laughs> you see this guy coming up? He's not letting up, is he? Oh, he is playing outstanding. I mean, he is, he is beating the linemen to the blocks. He's reading the, the play perfectly, filling the hole, filling the gap, and he's getting there with a little attitude. Man, he's had a heck of a game. Sophomore from North Crowley High School in Fort Worth, Texas. Good football there, the Metroplex area. Dallas Fort Worth. Here's Bennett inside the 15, giving four yards on that pickup. Now well, you look at what they're doing, just trying to chew up some clock. Get out of Conway with a victory. You bet. 0-3. Here in Conway and trying to get that first victory. This would be a big one to open up conference play, and they're on their way now. Twelve and a half minutes away from a W. Third down at seven. Stroud over the middle. Pass is caught inside the five-yard line. Catch is made by Delton Scott. Sophomore out of New Orleans. That's an 11-yard pickup on the play. First down. First and goal now for the Cowboys. And here comes the beef back in the game. Nick Jacobs coming in. But what a nice throw by Cody Stroud. Randy just staying in the pocket, staying patient, allowing his receivers to come open. Scott Flash is late. He's probably third in the progression. Comes right across the middle, though. Does a nice job of catching the ball and fighting forward for some extra yards. But Cody Stroud. In complete control of this offense. Well, oil machine today. Was that Nick Jacobs back yeah, there? It yeah, it was. But Marcus Peters, <laughs> I tell you what, he had a better chance and almost came up with a great interception. Play though, you know that's talk about that's five, to, five yard line. to know that you're going to be a guy that releases out and tries to run and sneak outside on you. Marcus Peters did a great job of defending that. Dylan Long in the backfield now for the Cowboys. Second down and goal now from the three. And he's the big back of the three. And off to Long right up the middle. Touchdown, McNeese. Quentin Marsh in that offensive line, 6'2", 295-pound sophomore, does a great job of pulling out and getting a big block. And Dylan Long gets his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. Doesn't get a lot of carries, but he's productive with them. Take a look at big number 62, pushing around and making that crease and seam. And, of course, Irene Zagata playing his football at Fort Bend Hightower, but senior offensive lineman, the only senior on that line. Yeah, this line has grown up fast. Very productive. Everett Marsh, Gorman, Agata, and Jones doing the job today. 
We'll take a break. 11.41 to go. Cowboys strike again. 56-28 lead now over Central Arkansas. The State Farm Southland Conference Mascot Challenge is back. This year's field is bigger and stronger. Willie the Wildcat. Bruce D. Bear. Mingo the Husky. Red the Cardinal. Big Red the Cardinal. Rowdy the Cowboy. Lafitte the Instigator. Colonel Tulu. Big the Demon. Eli the Eagle. Rumi the Lion. Izzy the Islander. And defending champion, Sammy the Bearcat. $5,000 is on the line. Vote for your favorite on the Southland Conference Facebook page. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm on it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're covered, Kevin. Thanks, Melinda. Uh, wait, I have blah blah insurance, so person, come help. Hey, Grandma. Six callers ahead of us, Jimmy. You're not helping. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you anytime, anywhere, any way. That's getting to a better state. Contact your local State Farm agent. We are back at the stadium at Conway. Some of these fans hanging in there. Not all of them have gone home. A few of them did when the rain came, but the rain is gone. Sky is still a little threatening, but so far no rain. A little cooler, though. I think they welcome that. I certainly welcome it. And I know you do as well. Absolutely. Got a little muggy in here when the rain was on its way. How about the Cowboys? Really playing a very complete game offensively, defensively. Doing a great job. The golf is brought out for UCA. It's Dylan Winfrey. And he is tripped up quickly at the 28. That's a 28 yard return for Winfrey. Stop made by Livingston Hamilton, the sophomore from Natchitoches, Louisiana. Montatula High School. They're in the Northwestern State neck of the woods. Yeah, speaking of neck, that's kind of high on the tackle there, but saw three different officials take a look at it and say, no foul. And I think that's a good call. Well, today's victory for, soon to be victory for Mene Stage Day sets up after a bye week, an off week, the showdown October 19th with Sam Houston there in Lake Charles. So that is going to be a big time battle. But I tell you what, you couple get, of weeks. You, you think about uh, this, Randy, and what happened last year in Central Arkansas. Came back. Well, I tell you that just defensive front for the Cowboys. That was Sean Brown on the last sack, and looks like he's coming back in there again, along with Everett El Elps. And so that's a uh, Cowboy lineman or pin of the ears back and coming after the quarterback. A couple of notes uh, from the Steve East and the UCA SID department: 56 points, the most points UCA has allowed since. A 53-24 loss at Arkansas State back in 2011. Pass is caught there. The third and a mile. Watts. And Watts uh, is able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. And expect to see the punt team. Yep, and here comes the punt team. So this is the most points also allowed on top of that. Most points allowed, 56, by UCA to a Southland Conference team since joining the conference back in 2006. So this is not what the doctor ordered it all for the for Clint Pass program here at home on the stripes today. Well, I think from a uh, just again, let's talk about last year what happened when we were here to open the Southland Conference schedule. It was Sam Houston State, and they really uh, had, were in a good position to win the game. Central Arkansas did a fantastic job of coming back and winning that game. The following week, though, they go down to Nacogdoches and get knocked off by the Lumberjacks. Does University of Central Arkansas, and on the other hand, San Diego State runs the table, and they end up in that tie for the conference championship, co-champions right. last year. But 
You know, there's something to look forward to for for uh, Central Arkansas, and you know the way Coach Clint Conn coaches is that this team is far, far from out of anything. Yeah, they'll regroup from this. They've got ball game next week. Going off the bye week themselves. We'll be hosting Nebraska Kearney uh, here in Conway next Saturday, and then October 19th in Beaumont to take on Lamar Cardinals. Well, I mean, East State, the win today will go to 5 and 1 and 1 and 0 in conference play. UCA will drop to 2 and 3 and 0 and 1. To start conference play. Well, you talked about this earlier, though, and, and it really there won't be a letdown by the Cowboys because they're playing the Sam Houston State Bearcats. On the 19th. Right. They'll get an open date. And you're running room down that left side. As Dylan Long picks up 25 hey. yards. How about your power back? Showing a little bit of speed on the outside. First and 10 now from the 36 yard line. Now more running room. Dylan Long trips the 29. Falls forward for a couple more. Picks up eight. Long, but exactly what the doctor ordered on first down you get eight yards running the ball and that really does just allow you to chew up a lot more clock it'll be a first down Pet crosses the 25 Here by McNeese State today. Next week, along with Nebraska Kearney playing here in Conway, non conference. Conference matchups Lamar at Sam Houston in Huntsville, Northwestern State at Nichols. That'll be the Southland Conference TV Network, 8 o'clock Central Time, and Stephen F. Austin in Hammond. Yeah, the NSU. Right. Uh -oh. We're going to get to see it now in front of us. There you go, Northwestern State down in Thibodeau next weekend. Yeah, Abilene Christian and uh, Houston Baptist as well, future opponents here in conference play. No, no, knockheads no, there in Houston, and I believe that's at BBVA Compass Stadium there in downtown Houston where the Houston Dynamo play. So we'll get some downtown exposure. Abilene Christian coming to town. And the sun's now popping back out here at Estes Stadium. Turned out to be a nice, comfortable late afternoon here. Early These days got a long bus ride home, but it's always sweeter with a, uh, with a win like this. And the way they put it together. Yeah, an, an important conference win, Randy. I mean, you get off at the, up to a really good start, and you know they go home to an open week, and then in come the Bearcats. The Bearcats will come calling, and Willie Fritz and Brian Bell, Tim Flanders, Richard Sincere. It's a uh, it's a <laughs> that's a great team. It's going to be a good matchup. Bill Long turns the corner inside the 25. Again, clock will continue to roll. 
Well, I like the play there by Dylan Long, Randy, because instead of bouncing it outside and trying to pick up a lot of yards, he just keeps it in between so he doesn't even bring the sideline into play. And this is a good opportunity to kind of get out there and see if you can get your field goal kicker some work. All right, field goal attempt coming up now. 39-yard field goal attempt by Ryan Rome. Who wears number 39 for McNeese State? There are the numbers on Rome this season: four or five. Longest big 35 yards. So this will be his longest attempt of the uh, or make if he can pull it off here of the season. Yeah, a little lefty. It's, these are important plays, though, Randy and Coach Viator. He, he he definitely wants to see this executed and executed well. is up right down the middle and the kick is good 39 yard field goal by Ryan Rome his longest of the season and they have added to their point total today Cowboys now push it to 59 28 Six minutes left here it comes The chances of being struck by lightning one in seven hundred and fifty thousand. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash one in twenty. Chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to the stadium here in Conway, Arkansas. Clint Cock and his Bears program. This has not been a good day on the stripes. 59-28 they trail. Six minutes to go. Other side, outstanding day for Matt Viator and his McNeese State Cowboys. Yeah, nice trip back to Lake Charles tonight. Well, he talked about the difficulty, Randy, when we were speaking to him earlier in the week about this particular venue. He said, you know, it's the longest trip that we have. In the conference, and you know, we want to make sure that everything goes well from a logistics standpoint. Can't predict the weather, can't predict the traffic. I mean, it's not, not you know, it's not just as easy as saying, "Hey, we're going to Conway to play Central Arkansas." So it takes a lot of involvement, and uh, looks like he got his team here in the way that they should have been gotten here, and they've actually, you know, relaxed and they've been playing extremely well all game. Cowboys will kick it off. John Bro with the honors at the goal line. Jatavius Wilson brings it out, the freshman for Central Arkansas, down inside the 15 yard line. And the stop made on the play there by Derek Allen. Well, Winrich Smothers uh, numbers on the day. He's going back out there for this series. 29 of 50 for 416 yards, three interceptions, and one touchdown on the day. But those interceptions have proven costly. Now 
pass was caught by Courtney, Courtney Whitehead. Whitehead. Yeah, he looked like a pinball there. He took a shot from the safety, bounced him into the linebacker, bounced him back to the safety, hangs on to the ball, picks up the first down. Take a look at this, Randy. He takes a shot there. Takes another hit. Bouncing around, but he hangs on. First down. And a pinball machine out there. Oh, that one nearly picked off. Ooh. Again, that Ooh. was close. Shea Nutt coming up off of that cornerback spot. Dangerous throw by Wimbrick Summers. Smothers. You knew faces out there on defense forming these take. Good chance to get some of this depth, get some of the key experience, as you mentioned. Put in situations that you may be called upon later in the year. Some others chase down in the pocket. He'll keep it out of bounds around the 33 yard line. So uh, Chris Loveless took a big shot there. Might have been Blake Gardner who came back and picked him off. I love it though. Love us all that hustle. I mean, he did. He took a big shot. He, he got blindsided. He got knocked. He blindsided, knocked out of bounds. Jumps right back up, and he's already at the line of scrimmage. No big deal. Well, a good catch there by Clay Murphy to pick up the first down and keep the chains moving. Yeah, a few good catches today. First down now for UCA. Five minute mark now. Well, this Cowboy defense, Randy, completely comfortable with keeping everything within a seven to ten yard range. Smother ball is tipped as well, knocked out of bounds. Tipped on the play by Daniel Hunter. He's checked in as well. He was the one hustling out. He's a junior from Dickinson High School, Dickinson, Texas. Down here, Galveston. Now, once again, on there. <laughs> I am Randy. Not the only one in shock. The fans here are not used to getting a blowout loss. They have won 13 straight. The Bears have won 13 straight on this field. So the fans that I talked to said, yeah, we really know what to do in this situation we've never been here for a loss guys back up to you yeah I'm from familiar territory man it's gonna be a rough uh, rest well, of the weekend and early week these people aren't used to losing here well listen it, 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 it takes on two tones the players are certainly gonna feel it but they're obviously gonna rebound you know the fans hey look it's gonna come to an end at some point in time and they've had a great run it's been a great story and you know what? You think about it from a fan standpoint, just say, listen, let's start a new winning streak and let's see how many more we can go. See if we can beat our old one. It's not the end of the world for so, the Bears, I can tell you that. So talk about the mindset, okay, between a loss and a blowout loss. Would you, I mean, it could be a tight game. Are those almost harder to digest than a maybe blowout loss? And at this point, they've given up you know, 59 points here at home. Well, you have to look at, you know, that you are really playing a good team. I mean, McNeese has come in here today, and they've already beaten the FBS team that we talked about in South Florida, opened the season. They scored 53 points against them. So, you know, you, you know you're going up against a very talented team, and, and Coach Conch said as much. So, hey, look, right. the fact is, maybe the ball didn't bounce your way today. That's all right. Pick it back up. Make sure that you're making the right types of plays and, and continue. And, oh, look, they, they have a great example of last year of what happened and they still got made it to the playoffs so after winning the first game so just put the shoe on the other foot they're going to take the attitude that sam houston state took close out you know run the table for the rest of your southern conference games and get back into the playoffs break down the film on this one when it's all said and done starting tomorrow and you know find out how to correct those mistakes and attack it during week of practice, you got a non-conference game with Nebraska Kearney tomorrow or next week here in Conway. Well, I tell you what, Randy, I'm looking at Winrick Smothers throwing the ball right now, and, and he's throwing, I'm going to call it flat-footed for lack of a better description, but he's not really 
able to, to stand with, you know, more of a straddled look where he's putting a little bit of zip on the ball. He's kind of throwing everything off the back foot, and it's, you know, ball sailing on him just a little bit and obviously not feeling 100%. Fourth down play now for UCA. Pass is caught over the middle. It's tied in again. Chase Dixon. That's a pickup of 25 yards on fourth down. So the Bears drive continues. Yeah, he did a nice job with Smothers and stepping into this one. Take a look here. He throws the ball on a line. And Chase Dixon, what a great target. 6'5, 239 pounds. And you got to figure out a way to get him the ball more in this offense. Pick up a four yards. We've got a UCA player and a McNeese player down around the 15 yard line. That's Alec Willis, number 55, hopping off under his own power, but he's hopping on the right leg, so he's not put any weight on the left foot. Uh, he's putting just a touch on it now. Take a look at the schedule for next week. Northwestern State and the Colonels from Nichols. The two quarterbacks are numbers on the season. And just coach here at Northwestern and the progress here at Thibodeau for Nichols are coached up. Well, Toscani Figaro, he set a Nichols State record for uh, yards gained on the ground already this season. He splits a little bit of time at quarterback with Bo Abair. A little uh, dual-headed quarterback combo for the Colonels. 3 o'clock next Saturday, live from Thibodeau, Louisiana. First or second down and six now. Oh, good catch there by Wilson. He went out and grabbed it, didn't he? It was a nice grab. Poorly thrown ball, but he's went over and got it. Latavius Wilson, the freshman. Defenders for McNeese led by Shea. Doing a good job of staying in front of Latavius and not allowing him to do something very acrobatic and creative, but... Oh, here comes the pressure on Smothers. And down he goes. That's Guy Morgan coming off on that safety blitz. Had a full run. Never got recognized or noticed or picked up by any of the protection for the Bears. And it's another negative play for the Bears. Attempt overthrown there around the 11 yard line. Good protection on that play. Good coverage by McNeese. That's Ryan Bronson, I believe, there. Bronson had that interception wow. return for the touchdown. How many Bronsons have played at McNeese State, by the way? It's a bunch of them. <laughs> they got brothers and uncles. Dating back many, many years. Yeah, and that was a big play, Randy, in the first half of this game. A 98 yard return for touchdown. His second interception on the season. And that was really the play where Smothers lost his balance and tried to throw while he was going down. He just didn't have enough arm strength to get it out over the top. Bronson played it perfectly and took it back for the touchdown. Take a look at uh, the schedule coming up for Coach Cock and his Central Arkansas Bears. As I mentioned, non-conference game uh, next week here in the Conway. But then October 19th, back to conference play. A trip down to Beaumont to take on Lamar. That'll be televised on the Comcast Sports at Houston. And then the 26th of October here at Conway against Stephen F. Austin. Manise State. Circle that game on the 19th, man. Take, take a week off and make adjustments. And then they host Sam Houston State. That will be the game of the week. 
nationally, probably, I would have, have a feeling it's going to be two, one of the better matchups across the country. Well, McNeese nice in the polls, depending on coaches' poll or sports poll, but uh, either number 11 or number 14, and certainly with this win today, you know they're going to move up a couple of notches. There's Smothers chased out of the pocket again. He's looking for help in the end zone. Lost it up there, but knocked oh, down. What a great defensive play. That was Aaron Sam, Randy. He played it perfectly on the on the wide receiver. He goes up with the left hand, and he flicks the ball away at the last second when the receiver had a chance to kind of bring that down. It was just a very heads-up play. Pass. Desmond Smith was back there in the corner of the end zone all alone, and Sam comes up with a huge play. Well, even with the big, big lead, they don't give up. That tells you a lot about the makers. Well, there's a lot of team. pride in this defense, and right. they don't want to allow another score. Fourth down now coming up, under two minutes to go. See, Bo Brown is back in the game as well, starting linebacker. Had Kyle Harden in there a little earlier. Yeah. Pass is knocked loose, no flag down at all. And McNeese State will take over on downs under two minutes to go. And they will wrap things up here in Conway. And Ryan Bronson on the defense, knocking the ball away. Well, I'll tell you what, you think about this series now, we came into today, it's four and three in favor of going to four and four. This game not as close, not nearly as close as uh, the previous three games, obviously, but, but very good rivalry developing with the carry. So pretty good attack today, East State. Marcus Wills, he's had a very nice day. Came in under 500 yards. He has added to that. Got some help from the young sophomore Kelvin Bennett, Dylan Long contributing, Javaris Murray. A lot of talent on this offensive side. And of course, we've seen the defense go to work for him in these states today as well. Uh, and a very young offensive line, only one starter, or excuse me, one senior in that starting group. Our friend Zagata is the senior, but. Antoine Everett, only a junior. Quentin Marsh, a sophomore. Nick Gorman, a sophomore. Ben Jones, a sophomore. Tyler Bolfing out there now, the uh, quarterback for McNeese State. He is a 6'2", 207-pound sophomore from Montgomery, Texas. Under a minute to play. Happy sideline there for Coach Viator. Wolfing takes to me. Under 30 to go. That will do it. Both teams making their way out. It has been all McNeese State today. Coach Viator and his Cowboys improving to 5 and 1 now on the season. And more importantly, in his book, 1-0 in conference play. See, so and Coach Cock shake hands there at midfield. UCA, the Bears fall to 2-3 and three on the season and 0-1 and in conference. Again, non-conference game next week. They return to Southland Conference play in a couple of weeks on the 19th in Beaumont when they take on the Lamar Cardinals. We'll break away from Conway and wrap it up. Victory goes to McNeese State. Final score of 59-28. Think of the NCAA as a spirit squad, cheering for student athletes at every big event and every small one. We'd be there in the classroom, at graduation, at their first job interview. Okay. So don't think of us as a spirit squad. Think of us as a mascot. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion,
character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. NSU Challenge Trophy is on the line. Northwestern State at Nichols. 3 o'clock Saturday on the Southland Conference Television Network. All right, welcome back to Estes Stadium. They are showing off that, what is that, the Red Beans and That's Rice? That's a Red Beans and Rice Bowl Trophy. And the only thing I want yeah. to know is, is there a recipe inside? We need that. We absolutely have to have one. I think that needs to be a criteria. Well, it's UCA Four had four. this hardware. Now they're going to take it back. Last three years they've owned To been. Lake Charles and celebrate a little bit. 59-28 victory for McNeese State. Let's go to the field now. Check in with Brooke Bentley. Brooke, take it away. Well, I'm with the coach who has the winning recipe, Coach Viator. And, and Coach, you talked about it at the half. This was really a huge win for you guys, especially to get your first win in Conway. How good did your team play in all three phases of the game to get the job done? We played good. I mean, we really did. Uh, we kept fighting. It wasn't all perfect. You know, we turned the football over a couple times and gave up a couple plays. Our kids just kept fighting hard and fighting hard and um, just can't say enough you know six straight weeks of playing and um, you know at Northern Iowa last week then you know bus up here seven and a half hours up here and our kids just hung in there and got it done. Now Cody Stroud you said there are a lot of good quarterbacks in this league but it seems like he's really making a mark how far has he come in his third year as a starter for you? I think he's come a long ways no question he does what we ask him to do and um, and I would say at the half I mean how about you know Winwick's mothers what a great player he is he was the MVP of our league last year and so there's a lot of good quarterbacks league because you know for us what we ask him to do this defense too with some huge turnovers how key were those touchdowns in the first half which i thought kind of swung the momentum and um and then a couple of big stops on defense in the second half too but it's a total team effort for us coach you enter a bye week and then you get ready for sam houston how good do you feel about this team going into that stretch especially getting ready for a very tough bearcats team well i mean i like this team you know and it's, you know we had a setback last week but i think this team competes hard and um, of course and we know what sam's about so uh you know hopefully but we, we need some time off no question about <laughs> it and uh you know and in a couple of weeks we look forward to the game all right, well, I'll let you go and enjoy that uh, Red Beads and Rice Trophy. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys, back up to you. All right, Brooke, thanks uh, very much. We appreciate that. Cowboys thanking their fans for making the trip here to Conway. And, yeah, that's seven hours. That's a long way for those fans to come as well. And Brooke's going to continue with some more reaction. We'll go back down to her. But right now, let's look at these stats. And 59-28, the final uh, rushing yards, McNeese, uh, Shea, 272 yards on the ground, 323 passing, 595 total offense. UCA had you know, almost 650 themselves. Well, it really just, as Coach Viator said for the Cowboys, Randy, really a complete game. However, there are some finer points to work on. They turned the ball over a couple of times, and that hurt them. Now, you get, a, you know, you keep turning the ball over. And that's not going to be a good thing. So that, that, that's something they can work on because those are fumbles just by hard hits that happen by D.J. Holland. However, if you look at it from top to bottom, start to finish of this game, the Cowboys just they were dominating on the offensive front and they had really just did a great job of creating time for Cody Stroud and then running lanes for Marcus Wilkes and the other running backs is just a dominant all right, Southland strong player of the game. Let's talk about that if we can. And, you know, so many choices with the uh, numbers put up. But Cody Stroud definitely one of them. And Cody Stroud got the job done today, bottom line, running this well, offense. Managing the offense and doing what the coaches wanted him to do. And he has gotten better. And that's what Coach Viator kept stressing to us. And, and I just think it's a great opportunity for him and now let's go downstairs yeah for a bit Brooks hanging out with uh, Cody Stroud right now yeah Brooke. I'm here with the player of the game and Cody you guys get your first win here in Conway how good did this one feel it's great to get a win you know it's great to start conference off 0 and 1 I mean 1 and 0 excuse me <laughs> excuse me <laughs> it's great to start conference off 1 and 0 and I'm um, proud of the guy, our guys play the way they played today 
Coach said a big reason for your success on offense is the balance. How balanced did you feel like the offense was today? Great. I think uh, it, it helps both ways, running game, the passing game, and passing game to run game. So if we can keep the balance up through the rest of the year, I think we'll be very successful. You go into a bye week, then you face Sam Houston State. You've got to be feeling good, though, about the way this team is playing going into that big game against the Bearcats. Yeah, I thought we had an off game last week, but we came back and we responded like we uh, we knew we could have. And we're going to need a game like this from now on, so uh, we we, we got to make it happen. Yeah, the, a long bus ride, but it's got to feel good now going back <laughs> to Lake Charles with this win. A little more enjoyable, I would say. It's a whole lot more enjoyable going back with a win. You know, the last time we was up here two years ago and – Losing close at the end like that, it was it was miserable going back home for a seven-hour bus ride. But it's a, it's a lot better to go back on a win. You're right. All right. Well, enjoy that ride and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Back up to you. All right, Brooke. Great job roaming the sidelines. Red beans and rice hardware going back to Lake Charles after Mini State's victory, 59 to 28. It's been a great day here in Conway. Appreciate all the support from the UCA and McNeese State sports information staff for the entire crew. We appreciate you watching. We'll do it again next week from Thibodeau, Louisiana. For Brooke Bentley, Shea Walker, I'm Randy McAvoy. Final score, 59-28. So long from Conway.